Who? Anna. Who? And welcome to the AC show. And we are here again. For the ultimate AC show game and extravaganza. And we are this time we are going to solve the murder. In Hercule Pryor, the first cases. A la wee 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 wee. Yes, we are going to finish the game tonight. We're going to solve the murder of the major. And find out who did the blackmailing of Angelina. And hopefully wedding will move on. While we solve this murder. Yeah, uh, hopefully my frame rate of right is going down. Uh, we had a few issues at the start, but we're here. We're here. Hey, Max. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the show. How are you? How your day been? Are you ready to solve the murder of Hercule Pryor? Well, not Hercule Pryor. Of the Major. All right, let's go. I'm pumped. I'm ready. I'm doing good, thank you. I'm doing very well. I am not too bad. Hope you are well also. I'm ready to go. I'm pumped. I'm ready to rock and roll. I am hoo-hoo today. That is good. That is good to hear. That is good to hear. Like what we like to hear. We like to hear people good, happy, healthy, and all together hoo-hooing. We have four chapters left. Oh, my head is hurting already. All right. Let's go. Good morning, detective. You slept well? Yeah, I slept great. I'm afraid I did not. I was hoping ah. for at least a moment of pleasant slumber, ah. but alas, it was not to be. Max did the murder. <gasps> oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Finding the Major's killer is the only thing that will put my mind at ease. Don't worry, Pryor, mate. We're going to do it. In that case, detective, <laughs> what can I do to help? Well, watching the snowfall last night, I saw, I saw a silhouette on the figure standing in the garden. Oh, yes, because we saw, we saw someone in the garden, didn't we? <sighs> Ooh. In that snow, if someone was out there, we'd have another body on our hands. I realize how strange it sounds. I would not believe it myself if I had not seen it with my own eyes. Staff have reported seeing things in the dark before. But it always just turns out to be shadows. It was likely just your mind playing tricks. How school today, by the way, Max? How, how, how'd that go? How'd your cover lesson? Uh, I did not see Elizabeth last night. Oh no, I did not see Mademoiselle Elizabeth last night. I'm afraid our Lizzie is not well. I think the events of yesterday were too much for her. We'll have to just make do without her this morning. Hmm. Convenient. Hmm. As Wordsworth once stated, rest and be thankful. Perhaps a chance of peace and relaxation will work wonders. Yeah, I thought about this last night. That Elizabeth and the cleaner, the, the cleaner staff, are the only one without alibis at the moment. Everyone else has seen each other, but the cleaning staff, they haven't seen each other yet. So we need, I feel like we're going to talk to them today. I'll also speak with Madame Van der Bosch at the earliest convenience. She is currently eating breakfast alone in the dining room. It's how she prefers it. But if you wish to speak with her now... Oh, I do. It's important I speak with her, but perhaps better allow her to finish. I do not wish to upset her before I have asked my first question. I could perhaps investigate the garden and any evidence from the figure last night. Would you permit me access to the house telephone? I would, but I'm afraid I found this morning that the telephone lines aren't working. The snow continued through the night and must have damaged them. How oh, convenient, that. Even if we could use the telephone, I don't think anyone would be able to reach us. In that case, it will be up to myself alone to solve the case. I'll let you know if anything changes. But until some of the snow clears, enough for the carriages to arrive, we are snowed in. Although I'm not able to call upon or leave the house to help, uh, although I'm not able to call upon or leave the house to find help from my local from the local authorities, it was a mean none of the guests are able to leave. I have until the snow cleared. Find not only the man without Angeline Blackmail, but also the major's killer, the major's body. Taken care of. Master Dremir and his brother, after sobering up, helped me move him into the cellar. Best place for the time being. Très bien. I imagine there is no reason for anyone to go down there. 
And besides me, no one. Once this snow clears, we will be able to move him from the house. Your assistance has been most valuable as always. Get Archie, my good man. Right. Right. I can let's go outside. What I'm doing, let's have a little. As always, we'll have a little look around. If there's anything on toward. Well, unless I go straight to the garden. I feel like all the rooms are going to be locked. I feel like upstairs are going to be out of bounds. I feel like it's just going to be a move on. Yeah, that's out of bounds. Oh, Angeline's there. So, let fuck go talk to her. What do we do? Let's go talk to everyone else. Smash. Hmm. What, Praro? Yeah, I would. Well, uh, look quite valuable, delicate. I shall resist the temptation to touch it any further. Oh. I know I've done all this, like, last chapter, but I'm just making sure. Huh. Yeah, right? You never know. A new clue might pop up. The dining room. All right, and that's your plans. All right, let's go talk to these first before I talk to Angeline. Contes, I wonder if I could ask you some questions. That is it, detective? No small talk? No inflating of one's ego? Ah, well, maybe, if you let me smash. I am afraid not, Contes. All right, fine. With the murderer still loose in the house, my mind is rather preoccupied. Well then, detective, perhaps I can be of some assistance. Comment, madame? I thought you might like to know what I found on the Major's body. Sorry, what? I demand know who gave you permission to see the Major's body. That certainly piqued your interest. A man has been murdered, and you find it acceptable to fool around and joke. Oh, oh please, Detective. Do you really think so little of me? Archibald asked for my assistance. He knows of my medical training from my days as a nurse. And I thought I would be able to help, even if it has been some years. It was not his place to grant you access to the body. Oh, kicking off. I shall remember to keep my assistance to myself next time. What did you discover on the body? A single stab wound, which you no doubt already knew. The knife was held in their right hand. I would say their predominant hand. I pride myself on all their method, and this is far from either. A suspect murder in a murder investigation had examined the very victim that they su that they are suspected of killing. It it like something out of a crime novel. Oh wow! Love breaking the breaking the fourth wall there. Judging by the depth of the wound, I would say there was no great force put into the strike. More a sign of defense than attack. Oh. If I had to say what weapon was used, a small sharp knife or dagger. Well, and you know that it's just serious when the music changed. It may confirm my suspicion the major knife being used to kill him. I understand it may be difficult for one to keep such information to yourself, but I ask you to try. Your involvement has already tainted my investigation. <laughs> you are welcome, detective. Whoa! When my spirit offer head on the ongoing in this house, I will surely be seeing the green for the countryside once more. I must do what I can to redeem the reputation I have worked to build, starting with finding the killer. Keep this information to yourself. This bitch. I mean, thank you for the information, but fuck now. Bonjour, Monsieur Demir. Detective Poirot, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. How are you? The truth, Monsieur. With each step towards uncovering the blackmailer. I am thrown two steps back as to the identity of the Majors killer. Is there something I can help you with? After investing the crime scene yesterday, I asked Monsieur Sterling to move the body. Archibald came to me and asked for my help in the matter. My brother and I dealt with it. 
Merci for your help. It is a job that only the professionals should have to undertake. It's a job that had to be done. Although it may have affected my brother more than I. Oh, hello. How so? At the sight of the body, the color drained from his face. Once we had reached the cellar, Zakaria took himself straight off to bed without even a good night. Oh! While in the study, I noticed the major safe was locked. Do you know who had access? Felix and Madame Vandenbosch are the only ones with keys, as far as I'm aware. Oh, and Archibald. I'm sure I heard Felix ask. Nigga, talk to Archie, mate. Nigga, talk to the Archer. I wonder why Mr. Sterling did not mention this previously. Uh, have you spoken with your brother this morning? I have not seen him since last night. I'm sure he will have been fine after a good night's sleep. I imagine the alcohol would have acted at a sufficient sleeping aid. He does not need his younger brother checking in on him. Perhaps that is exactly what he requires. I'm not sure what he told you yesterday, detective. But he's a big boy. He can look after himself. Hmm, but you haven't noticed him drinking, saying he doesn't touch alcohol. I worry that may not be the case, monsieur. Hmm. His time in the war came up in conversation more than oh. once during our conversations. My frame rates are going up again. He's still talking about it. I thought talking to the doctor would have stopped all of that. Merci. Oh, hang on. I'm going to take a pause. Take a quick pause while it sorts itself out. Little fucker, why are you being a prick? Good. That oh, we're good. Right, Angeline, I talk to you. Good morning, detective. I hope you were comfortable last night. I'm not downloading anything, am I? No. Bonjour, mademoiselle. The room was more than pleasant, merci. I'm afraid my mind was not in a state to enjoy it to its full potential, though. I can't imagine any of us slept soundly last night. Hopefully guilt will be weighing heavily <clears throat> on someone's shoulders this morning. Perhaps on more than one set. <sighs> I'm sorry if I was not much help last night, detective. On the contrary, your inside knowledge of the guests was of great help to my investigation. But there are many more questions that require answers. True. What were your feelings toward the major's position in the house? His position? You mean about him living here? Yeah, pretty much. That's what I asked. Oui. Even in a house this size, you must see a lot of each other. I enjoyed having him here. When I was away with Gideon, it was comforting to know Maman was not alone. Although, his work with Mr. Da Silva has kept him away from the house of late. Oh. What can you tell me about their relationship, working or otherwise? There is not much to tell, only that there is no love lost between them. Do you know what their business entails? He was always quite private about his work. I know that he was helping Mr. Da Silva with some safety matters. Ooh. I found a check addressed to the Major from Monsieur Da Silva. It noted security consulting. Ah, that's right, security. With his military training, he helped Mr. Da Silva prepare for any trouble with the strikes. Ah. Although the Major death had taken president, there had been a development in the blackmail case. A development? Oh, detective, I knew I could count on you. Ah, well, you're welcome. It may not be the news you had wished for, though. Another letter has been found. Addressed to me? I don't know how much more I can take of this. Oh no, not to you. 
although it has been written in the same manner, using similar phraseology, it was not sent for your eyes, rather, the Major's. Or at least, that is how it seems. I'm sorry, Detective, I don't understand. It is addressed to him or not? I found it in the Major's study yesterday while conducting my preliminary search. Whether he is the author of the letter or the recipient, I am still yet to discover. Oh! Could the Major have been behind the blackmail? Heavens no! He could not do that! You did not hesitate for a moment. Why would he do such a thing? A and then to send a letter to himself? It just doesn't make sense. Merci for your time. Cheers, mademoiselle. Thank you very much. Useful? Oh shit, hit A by accident again. Exactement. Talk to you, Archie. Where's the key? Alright, never mind. Get the murder. Investigate the blackmail. Ah, there we go. Up the ship. Uh, Zachary shot by the corpse. Oh. Some would say a lucky guess. Ah, oh. I've heard the men return physically from war, but their mind remains on the battlefield. Now you talk to Gideon again. Uh, Aunt Angelina the Major. Wow. Angelina. Diff Magnifique. Well, I can't be surprised with Angelina and Felix Bond. He'd been the figure in his life for so in her life for so long. All right, they gotta talk to Gideon again. Hmm. I'm on form. If it will help you find the major's killer, of course. Your brother was seen a doctor. When he returned from the war, he was a different man. Everything became about what he had seen. I cannot speak from experience, but I can only imagine the horrors he must have witnessed. The first weeks he would wake in the night, screaming. I found him one night, cowering behind the desk in the study. When I tried to help him out from beneath it, well, it was the first time I had ever feared for my life. That is not why you two are no longer close? And not at all, Detective. We were always very different in nature. While I had always wanted to follow an academic path, Zakaria was more of a free spirit. Or at least as free as our father and the laws would be. Ah. And yet, he ended up in the military. Quite the contrast. Our father demanded that he at least try to do something his life. And when some of his friends joined the army, he signed up with them. It wasn't long before he moved out from the family home. Achievement! I always assumed that he had put the war and everything that came with it behind him. Uh, I will on, I will reread that. See that is far from the truth. Uh, because I shouted achievement over top of it. Uh, I went long before he moved out of the family home after returning from the army. I always assumed that he had put the war and everything that came with it behind him and was moving on, but now I can see it far from the truth. Oh man, another fucking big gamer score, yeah. Alright, let's go do the garden and then we'll go talk to the bitch of the house. Find evident on the figure from last night. Well, on one hand, confirmed I'm not seeing things as Mr. Stone suggested. But on the other hand, posed even more questions than answered. Man, look at this! He just rocking out in the snow. Like, huh. there's a small trail of footprint in the snow. The major was seen walking around here yesterday. Uh -huh. A wild made lighter with the insignia of a military, military regiment. The major must have dropped it. We're not going to pick it up then. Alright, we'll, we'll do a lap. So then I know. Hmm. 
Rod and Tool had been left out presumably before the snow fell. Always good to get the Barons in, right? You never know what you might find in the, the warm white blanket of snow. They must have been left out on the collection. I cannot see anyone making it through the snow though. The house is completely snowed in. It does not look like we shall be going anywhere anytime soon. The snow is still falling. I am hardly dressed for the occasion. Hat man and van is possible to finish at breakfast. And they're ready to answer my question. I went no. I'm not done yet. I'm back outside. Hmm. I already gathered what I need from the garden. Even if I wanted to. The snow is too thick to venture any further. Okay, never mind. Alright, here we go. I go talk to the, the posh cow. See what she got for me. Oh. Oh, fuck me. Here we go again. This is gonna be the fucking way, isn't it? Eh? This is gonna be a fucking dick way. We love this fucking frame break issue. I'm gonna do a fucking speed test quick, see what it's on. Right, well, they're saying it's fine. It, you're being a knobhead. Oh, we good? No. Why are you saying you're not excellent? No, is it, you stupid fucking thing? Ah, oh, I need to fucking. I'm actually gonna punch off. I'm gonna finish this game tonight. Nine point two, nine point three. Maybe I don't know. Maybe fucking. Let me get rid of some tabs. Maybe that will help. Oh, we're going back down. Alright. Get rid of... Hang on. Get rid of that. Don't need that. Don't need that tab. Need that up. Oh, maybe that'll help. Refresh it again. 
We love it. We love my streams, don't we? They're great. Do a little movement, make sure I'm okay. Uh right, we're good. Uh, while I must speak with Madame Vanders boss, I should also take the opportunity to talk to Manuel, Manuel Ray and Hannah in the kitchen. My, my it, 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 I have good days and bad days. Like sometimes it's perfectly fine, other times it makes me want to shoot myself. I wonder how many travel expeditions have been planned on while enjoying the content of the globe. Hopefully that might be the last of it now. Hopefully it will be okay. Ma Madame Van der Spock's collection of art extends further than just paintings at the Queen's head. Huh. The fallen snow had laid a beautiful white blanket on the countryside and surrounded the house. Yeah, donkey, sort your shit out. Come on in. Ooh. The fallen snow had laid a beautiful white blanket on the countryside that surrounded the house. Yeah, fuck it, let you look at the same shit over and over again. <laughs> oh, another bust. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Alright, let's go talk let go talk to the re the kitchen person first before we talk to the Snooty Mitch Snooty son. Have I gone again? No, I'm good. Okay. But oh, I've gone again. There doesn't seem to be anything interesting here. It's a cupboard. You didn't even look. Man, look at all this food. Look at it. We've got the cabbages. Cabbages. The fruit. Cabbages. Cabbages. <laughs> How many cabbages do you need? The oh. cooker of the used them. Achievement. The cooker of the used them for quite some time, judging by their condition. Get an achievement though. Not oh, Max. Bonjour, madame. <laughs> you must be the wonderful cook. Wonderful and modest, sir. I am. Oh, for I fuck's sake, sake, I hit A. A ravishing meal last night. It has been some time since I ate so well. Glad to hear it. I need to stop hitting A. Like. Sit up, madame. A detective is fine. Uh, this is for the time you got an achievement. I couldn't redeem it. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I'll I, I late it one. I, you know. In that case, mademoiselle is fine for me. And I will ignore your presumption of marriage. It done it again. Fuck's sake, here we go. Here we go. Oh, for fuck's sake! I might have to pull my internet and come back. But this is ridiculous. I'll be back. I'm, I'm going to have to pull my internet and come back. So, hang on. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm going to pause my game. Oh no, I can't fucking pause it. Shit. If I pull the it now, I'm gonna fucking crash my game. Yeah, I'll be back. Alright. YouTube, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna pull my internet and I'll be back into it. Uh yeah. We are back, hopefully. Uh Frame rate went up to like 10, 10, 5. Uh, hopefully, we should be a okay now. Uh, 
I'm just gonna refresh my own stream. My frame rate is going down rapidly now. Uh, so hopefully we should be okay for the rest of the stream. Okay, we're good. All right, like I didn't touch anything. Everything should be fine now. Uh, in that case, Mademoiselle was fine for me. Now, in order for something of marriage. Achievement! You met all characters in the game. Wow. Achievement! Yeah. You have been in the Van der Boss family for quite some time. That's right. I've seen staff come and go, but the house always needs a trustworthy cook. I agree. But if I was to eat what you prepare every day, I fear I may be the size of La Maison. Not a bad thing, detective. You could do with some meat on your bones. Ah. Well, with the snow still not clearing, we may be stuck here for the weekend. Double Perhaps achievement. I should look to adjust my pantalon buttons. Yeah. I understand you took some ice for the mayor yesterday. Mayor? Major. Monsieur Archie told me what had happened. Bruises can swell fast, so I took him some ice to bring it down. <sighs> Strange, Monsieur Stolen. Dad and Tommy, it was the Major that requested the ice. How was the Major when you saw him? Grumpy, as always. I suppose one would not take kindly to being punched as he was. It was funny, though. Punched or not, he was as ungrateful as ever. Thank you. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. I reckon we could have. I reckon we could have found found G this game in this stream. Like we're already halfway. Like, I reckon it possible. Bonjour, madame. May I offer my condolences for your loss? Haha, uh -huh, dead. <laughs> Thank you, detective, but they are not necessary. What can I do for you? I was hoping you would be prepared to answer some questions. If I must. Why would someone want to kill the major? I'm sure you're aware he was not the easiest man to get along with. His hot temper made him a number of foes. Oh, you got that right. A hot temper is reason enough to kill a man. His mouth often acted before his brain. Perhaps someone had grown tired of dealing with it. You suggested why someone might kill him, but who do you believe would do it? Seeing as I heard Mr. Becker's in what I would describe as an unnecessarily loud exchange of words yesterday, he would be my first suspect. Oh. You heard them yourself. How could I not? The volume they were shouting at, I could hear them from the study in my room. You did not think it fitting to tell me this yesterday? I didn't think Felix was going to wind up dead and a murderer loose in my house. My apologies, detective. I appreciate the sarcasm. Although I must learn of this argument, it's not Madame that I expected the answer to come from. Rather, Monsieur Beckers, you had a great deal explaining to do. A letter was found in the Major's study. I assume you are talking about the supposed blackmail letter. Oui, madame. You know of it? It arrived shortly after the first. Rather coincidental, if you ask me. I'm not sure I understand what you're trying to say, madame. He no doubt had secrets hidden away, but do you honestly think Felix had anything of value to his name worth threatening him for? Perhaps you should enlighten me. Well, he was here, mm. living in my house, eating my food, prepared by my staff. Does that answer your question, Detective? Uh, how do you think the Major came to have the letter? I wouldn't put it past him to have written it himself. Oh. In hopes of getting some sympathy from me. Oh, she put on to him. And the other letters. He probably wrote those too. 
If Angeline paid the first, that would have given him the money to pay the second letter. He is the White Knight, saves the day, and expects to live here happily ever after. I did not expect Madame Vanderspot to be so blunt with her thought towards the Major. I was under the impression there were more than a friendship, none, not less. It was quite the very plan that Madame had laid out for the Major. I'm not sure I can believe he would go to such level to, of deceit. I'm sure Mademoiselle Angeline will have an opinion on the matter. I'd like to ask about you, about, ask you about Monsieur de Silva. What is it you wish to know? You two have been friends for some time now. And while I do not mean to pry, has your relationship only... If you are trying to insinuate that Mr. De Silva and I are running around like school children, you could not be further from the truth. He was friends with my husband, for goodness sake. Oh, she didn't like that question. Oui, I understand they worked together. Investments, if I am correct. Mr. De Silva was the voice of reason that my husband should have listened to more often, instead of throwing our money at businesses that were already on the verge of bankruptcy. Merci, madame. I shall not bother you any further. Ooh. I gathered all I need from Madame Vanderbilt and Mademoiselle Rohena. I shall should return to the Great Hall. Bitch. Angeline, you got you got a question to answer. Is there something I can help you with, detective? Yes. No. I shall not keep you any. Yeah, no. <clears throat> yes, I gotta do this. Uh, can you believe the major blackmailer? Yep. And then we go there. The pieces of the puzzle. Off. Angeline and Katanya have different impressions of the major. There must be a reason for this. Talk to Angeline. There we go. Thank you. Is there something I can? Your mama did not describe her friendship with the major in such a positive light. You have got the wrong end of the stick, detective. Mamo has snapped at him recently, but it was nothing more than that. It was something to do with the letter. I heard them in the library before Mamo shouted and he stormed out of the room past me. Could it have been the blackmail letter that instigated their argument? Ooh. Why would Mamo be upset with him over the letter? Madame is of a very different opinion from yourself regarding his connection with the letters. She believes him to be the author. That is what she told you? She has always been one to make a quick, if not rash, decision, but she cannot truly believe that. Was the Major aware you had paid the first blackmail letter? I don't recall telling him directly. I did not want Maman to find out it had been paid. If he knew, surely she would. Madame believes he may have been behind all the letters, and taking your payment of the first, then used it to pay the second and be the hero in you and your mother's eyes. I never knew Maman had such an imagination. Where would she get a story like that Ooh. from? That is a question I was hoping you may be able to answer. You have met him. Do you really think he's capable of such a devious plan? Yes. It is a plan only the most crooked and underhanded could create. Is that the major? I am not so sure. The more I think of Madame's story, the more ridiculous and obscure it sound. That does not mean it can't be ruled out. I shall not can be ruled out. Sorry. Merci, Mademoiselle. Right. What now? Uh. Hey, Gun Griffin. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the show. How are you doing this evening? Welcome, welcome. How are you? All right. So we've got it. Would it be? That maybe? No. Nope. In investigate the major's involvement in the blackmail. A handwriting maybe? Come nope. My little great. Hmm.
Maybe this? Is there nope. something I am not seeing? Uh, I'm good, just didn't clean it in my bathroom. Ah, nice, nice. How did that go? I hope it went well. Hmm, I'm gonna let you go, maybe out of temper. Uh, Rihanna to an accord. I removed the body. Uh, that could ride that link over that. Back the body. That maybe? Order and method. Nope. That. This will not get me any clue. Nope. Oh, great mirror sink counter all spotless hey that's good to hear that is good to hear indeed hmm maybe you had a temper i don't know i need a wee let me solve this and i'll go for a wee i'll run a quick ad uh this No. It's gotta be something close by. With this. I cannot see the logic nope. in this. Major didn't have much of a name. I must nope. take a different approach. I cannot see the logic. Nope. Am I on crack? Yep. I think, hang on. It gotta be... Come, my little grey cells. I must act nope. Ah, oh, then. Okay. Well, rather than move the body, we had that. This will not get me in. How's your day been, anyway? Apart from the cleaning and everything. I oh, went. What if I did? Is there something I am? No, you're doing that right now. Oh, you're you're being a prick. I must take a different approach. What do I do in the morning? Uh, I wake up around 10, I have breakfast, uh, then I do a workout, then I do some work from home, play a few video games, watch a bit of YouTube while I'm doing work, and then I stream. I don't have tea around 3, I have dinner around 3 o'clock, and I stream at 4. That is my day. And then I go to hide the bodies, you're right. What the fuck? Order and method. Alright, it's not very often I look up an answer for this game, but I'm going to just for this because I really need a Wii and I'd rather get to a save point before I go for a Wii. So, uh. I just want to know the answer for this. I'm not going to spoil it for myself. Another success. I never doubted myself. There we go. 
I wonder if Black Man had a greater effect on the relationship than expected. There we go. All right. I'm going to go to the toilet quickly. I'm going to run a quick ad. One minute 30 ad. I'm going to go to the toilet. I'm going to go hide a body. And then I'll be right back. Uh, yeah. And, and Max, just for just for this just for this urination only, I appreciate not to redeem hydrate at the moment. Uh, that would be very grateful. All right. I'll be right back. I'm back. Yes, thank you. Just had a full bladder, so I didn't want to. You know. Cool, we're back. All right, what am I doing? Who am I talking to? I don't know. Hey, Donkey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Who am I talking to? Angeline. Something I can help you with, detective? Wrong fucking headset, that's why. Uh, what the arrival of the blackmail letter will, uh, what the arrival of the blackmail letter what called attention to madam and major relationship? I'm afraid it had been that way for some time. Maman is not forthcoming with her emotions, as I'm sure you are aware. But I could tell she had not been happy with their arrangement for the last few months. What gave you that impression? There was not one particular thing that she expressed. It was just the way she spoke to him and of him when he wasn't present. Ooh. I shall not keep you in Yeah, I hope all is well, Donkey. Hope you're a nice day at college. I hope you're good. And welcome, welcome. I believe I got everything that I required of Mr. Sterling. Uh, that I required. Mr. Sterling was able to assist me in gaining access to the major study. Whatever you need, Detective. I wish to inspect the major study again. Certainly, Detective. Ah, we're making moves. The ruin is still a crime scene and should have remained untouched, but I looked as though it had been ransacked. I request Mr. Sterling to have the body wrapped. I request Mr. Sterling to have the body wrapped and removed, which had been done, thankfully. What else had gone on in here? <sighs> I'm not going to college tomorrow. Free! How come? Why no college? Gonna get some blood taking. Ray? Uh, been 10 days and I've had a cold one. Uh, uh, the, yeah, gonna get some blood taking. Jeez. Uh, okay, is that good or bad? Someone was already looking for something in particular in the major document. The accounts have been thoroughly ruffled through. The major have recently taken a large loan. An interest rate in an astronomical. Adjusted with the major with no return address. Huh. Didn't fucking click that one. Okay then. Hmm. I must admit, side by side, that a striking resemblance between mere and fear. Uh, perhaps that flattered the way to win over Madame Vanderbosch. Hang on, this was a full portrait. Someone's there. How strange, the vice count also present in the picture, but having folded out. I did not think there was any hostility between the major and the late vice count. Yeah. So how come? How come you're getting blood taken? Oh. If you don't mind me asking, you can tell me to shut the fuck up, and I will. Oh, my nosy little fucker. Uh, how strange! I could not access you yesterday. But now I've been left wide open, scratches are obviously around the lock. Someone in that house was eager to see the safe content. And half sealed letter addressed to Madame Van der Bosch from the Major. I am not one to read other private mail, but under the circumstances. 
Hey, why, Max? No, why? See you very soon. My dearest Cassandra, I feel there have been an age since I've been able to set my eyes on you. A day I've waited for you so impatiently, I keep the photograph of us together. I keep the photograph bust together at the lake close to my heart always. I cannot wait to see how young Angelina had grown. Her beauty will surely soon reach that of her mother's. I hope the gift from the Orient reach you fine. They have really something to behold. A work that has kept me away so long is drawing to a close. I'll be able to return into the continent within the month. At your request, I found accommodation in the city. It pain me to think of being so close and yet unable to see you every moment. But if it eases your if it eases your worry, I shall not continue to question it. I will arrange for a visit to the house. An old friend returning will surely raise minimal suspicions. I understand that the vice count also currently out of the country. I hope you have not felt the strain of loneliness taken over, and it will not be long until we have reunited. Until that day, till the end of mine, my heart is yours, Major Felix Hagen. It seemed a great deal of Madame van der Spot and the major relationship that she had. In, uh, that she has were held. It is clear from the letter that their affection for one another had been more than their friendship for some time. The mention of a young Angeline suggests it may go back as far as 20 years. Anything else? Ah. Oh. Alright, I guess I got a fucking. Nope. What did that say? Nope. Okay. Interest rates. I must no. Nope. Surely. Well, what about this then? Come, my little girl. Well, you can get fucked. Oh, you're actually being a prick. Order and method. Things are beginning to become clearer. The Major paid the letter that was addressed to him. He must have been worried enough that something would release to the public, but what? I must take a different... I cannot see the logic in this. Order and method. That I cannot see the logic. Okay, what the fuck? They got me one of these. Closer. I must take a different. Op Something I am. Come, my little grey cells. We must think logically. Mm. 
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. I know. Uh, the hidden photos of them along with Angelina attachment to prove that he cared deeply for them. What a revelation. I believe the major would do anything, everything to remain in the comfortable life he accustomed to. But would he stoop so low to fake a blackmail letter? I must act on thought. I must act on... What that? Another success. The evidence showed the major was not the author of the blackmail letter. <gasps> the major would have picked him just like man without Angeline. Whoever it apparently lettered knows a great deal of many people. I wonder how many more have received similar letters. Um yeah, we did it. Mostly by ourselves, but we did it, yeah. The uncertain connection between the Major and the Ransom had been resolved. The Major being blackmailed. The letter was not written by his hand. What remained unresolved is why the Major being blackmailed. Two cases of extortion under one roof. The question of their relationship must be asked. The Major's secret is anything but obvious from this letter. I now have a blackmailer, a murderer, and no weapon to find. And the correct process to follow, I, they shall be found swiftly. Uh, I should take my leave. The room already... Revealed enough new insight to the Madame and Major New Lives. Detective Poirot, I have been asked to inform you that Lady Vandenbosch has returned to her room, and she wishes not to be disturbed. Merci. Madame certainly has mastered the art of subtlety. They may not be the exact words she used, but I am sure you can imagine. Excuse me. I have some mm, just so I get to questions. To just so I get questions, you don't want to be disturbed. Perhaps I should take the opportunity to search the top floor. Now there's no one to disturb me. There's one room that holds particular interest. I should expect a storage room while I have the rare opportunity. Oh, I'm on the very top floor. Hold up. At the storeroom. One moment. We're on a different floor. We're going to have a little look around. Oh. Getting the start. We truly want simple players. Yep. Uh -huh. I could spend every waking moment reading about the eventual character of the books. Mm -hmm. A painting of a majestic mountain, the tip of which pierced the clouds above. The attention is full of detail and, fan and fantastic. The painting of an, of an atmospheric forest scene that either captured the ambient of the forest perfectly. Ah. A painting of a boat sailing across the vast ocean. The art is very clearly talented. Hmm. There are a number of spectacular pieces in Madame Van der Poel's electric art collection. Achievement! Yeah. More gamer score for me. Woo woo! Oh, what do we have it here? Children toys. Oh. A collection of children toys. Such a scene to see them stored away and not being enjoyed. Consider them having kept in storage room. They're almost in perfect condition. Um, the, my immediate assumption would they belong to Mademoiselle Angeline. Oh. The time and skill take to build such a wonderful piece is, is an art form. A book! A lone story book rests here. It obviously been read a num great number of times, judging by the condition of the spine and pages. I'm perhaps not the target demographic, but I understand it's quite popular among younger audiences. To the real lady that held happy birthday, 
Watching you grow into a proper young lady have been more than word than can describe. All my love, Felix. I wouldn't expect to find just a heartfelt message written by Monsieur Hagen and to Mademoiselle Angeline. The unusual inscription. It was fine from a family friend. Oh, he's deaf of the dad, isn't he? He's deaf of her father. I cannot get a straight answer from anyone regarding the major. I know you've been friends with Madame Van der for some years, but I must find out if anything more. Oh, we defo the dad. Is there something I am not seeing? I must take a different... I cannot see the logic. This will not get me any closer. Yes, when the time is right, we can link them all together. And let me double check. I want to double check, see if I got everything. Okay, where are we? So, get the books. Nothing in here. Clock. That. Cool. Oh, Alright, let's go. Up, bitch. Man of Vanna's box collection of art is then further than just paintings. Huh. We're on fire. We were standing gazing in the flame for hours. I do not see anything of interest in here. Huh. The falling snow had a beauty white blanket over the countryside and surrounded the house. A perfume bottle looked rather expensive. It would be wise to be very careful with them. Detective Poirot, what do you think you are doing in here? Talking to you? I have something I wish to discuss with you. Well, I hope it is important enough to justify barging into one's bedroom. I assure you it is. Good. Because this has gone on far too long. We are snowed in this house while a murderer runs amok. I can understand your frustrations, but it is not as simple as... You were once an incompetent officer, and now it seems you are just as incompetent as a detective. I'm sick of her. If I was not being lied to and misled at every turn, perhaps the murderer would already be in custody. I hope you are not suggesting I had something to do with Felix's murder. Yes. I am suggesting that if I had the support that everyone claims they are offering, we would be in a very different situation. If you have something you want to ask, I suggest you ask me now. I was not aware the Major was so close to your daughter. We met before Angeline was born, so he was often at the house when she was growing up. And where was it you two met? I was attending an event. Felix was also in attendance as a serving officer. A conversation was struck. So it was not through the Viscount that you two met? I did not require my husband to start conversations on my behalf. It was you that instigated it then? <laughs> my, my, detective. That active imagination of yours has taken you on quite some journey. Why, thank you. Madame attempted to deflect from the subject. She obviously does not feel comfortable with discussion. The late Viscount and the Major were surely friends then. Edwin spent much of his time away on business before Angeline was born. Felix was a welcome distraction from the loneliness of the house. 
You were alone in the house. The staff continued their duties, of course, but trying to get any sort of sophisticated or cultured conversation from them was like drawing blood from a stone. And when Angeline was gone? Edwin remained at home. It was his duty as a father. And the Major? He had his own business and life to tend to, but we remained in touch via letter. Around the time of Edwin's passing, Felix had relocated to the area. Oh, convenient, now. Madame Grandu Coy and brief with information he offers. With the Viscount Defcon siding with the Major Return, surely a mere coincidence is too far fetched. I would like to ask you about the letter I found in the Major's study. I'm sure he has hundreds of letters in there. Most of them could and should have been thrown away a long time ago. You are going to have to be more specific. I refer to the letter addressed to you, the one of a romantic nature. Romantic nature? Oh, please, detective. Felix did not have a romantic bone in his body. He made his intentions quite clear in the letter. I must admit I myself was surprised. You really do have quite the active imagination, detective. If that is how you wish to interpret it, so be it. But I can assure you, the Major did not think of me that way, and certainly did not include it in a letter. Definitely did, though. I've read it. I think that is all for now. I've read it, you bitch. What are you on about active imagination? You're on, you're on delusion to grandeur. Okay. Order and method. Nope. Maybe that. Come, my little girl. You motherfucker. Oh, okay, okay. This is gonna be a bit of a prick. Ah, right, he's innocent. Fine, whatever. Uh, appropriate gift, gift from the major. I cannot see the logic nope. in this. Antiques. Appropriate gift. Is there something? Nope. Order and method. Nope. What this? I must take a nope. different approach. Nope. Oh, fuck. Oh, you're... This will not get me any... Yeah, but I'm right though, aren't I? Come, my little grey cells. What this then? Act on well, it, uh, Pryro, you're uh, actually getting on my wits now. What, 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 nah. this will not get me in. But they all fucking link up each other. Well, it clear he fucking threw him out the picture because he was in love with her, but yet apparently this is wrong. Is there something? I cannot no, see that was good. I'm right though. I'm I'm right. I'm I'm steps ahead again, and because I'm steps ahead again in my own head, this is becoming a bitch. Okay, so it obviously she was in love with him. She is the father of her. Could he died before he returned? Blah blah blah. He gave her the gift because he's a daughter. That da, da, da. That's why he didn't want Gideon to marry her because he thought someone was better. I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's. I could be wrong. <laughs> but in my head, that's the picture I am painting. Alright, major return after the Vice Count death. Order 
order and method that it I must take a different ap what about this is there something nope I've pro oh my I what do I need to click then because I've Get me any cl oh, this. No, I'm not. No, I'm not looking it up. No, I'm, I'm gonna give myself a couple more minutes before I look it up. I'm figuring it out. I figured it out before. I can figure it out again. Uh, from, yeah. Come, my little grey set. Be something to do with this letter. I must take a different approach if I. Oh, you're pissing me off, pro mate. What is this? I must act on. Order and method. Hey, hey. So you're telling me you got nothing. The logic in and not just and not just that to that is it no I must act on or that to that Come, no stupid game stupid 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 game but i could have my head in my own head and i can't figure it out What is it then? What? I did that. Your joke. I did that. I 100% did this. What a revelation. Obviously, the major character of Cassandra. And no surprise to anyone. You're a prick. You're a little bit of a prick. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. It seemed the major lived rather company in Vanders Post South for many years. Jory How are you getting an interest rate and major reside in the family a long time to that conclusion? The major depend on Um no fuck off. That's stupid. That is the dumbest man deduction I've ever heard. This, this really necessary <laughs> if you are correct with the major had no romantic feeling towards you why would he keep a photograph of you and mademoiselle angeline hidden he may have stayed in my home but felix was a grown man detective what he kept hidden or otherwise has nothing to do with me but it does not surprise you that he had such a photograph we have been friends and he has been there for Angeline for many years, but you find it strange that he keeps a reminder of us? Perhaps that says more about you, Detective. No, nah, perhaps I'm right, and this game what doesn't want to agree. What is strange is that if he did hold a flame for you, why he would never express it? If he did, it was not reciprocated. I have not even considered another since my husband's passing. Not that it is any of your business. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame. Oh, cow. Stupid. Stupid. By the time I speak with Angeline again, she should give her a valuable piece of the puzzle. Detective Poirot, are you any closer to uncovering the truth of Felix's involvement with the letters? I am, mademoiselle. I can confirm that he was not the author of the blackmail letters. 
So the author is still out there. Oui, oui. Oui, but it will not be long before they are apprehended, and the only letters they shall be penning will be from behind iron bars. Oh, peak. Your confidence is rather assuring. Thank you, detective. You're welcome. You comment about the current guest stage with me last night. I'm sorry, detective. I did not intend to leave your mind so full of thoughts. No apology is required. It actually made me question my whole chain of thinking. What if there had been a collusion between them, and the Major's murder was planned, organized and orchestrated to make the investigation seem almost impossible? Oh my, Detective, that is quite a theory. Every guest has a motive. You confirmed that with the mention of Mademoiselle Conrad and the Major's fight. Supplying one another with a rock-solid alibi would surely throw off any detective. But not you. Correct, mademoiselle. It would take much more to stamp Detective Poirot. While searching the storage room, I found a book that I assume was a gift from the Major to you. I haven't seen that book in so long. Yes, it was a gift for my 10th birthday. I have read it from cover to cover countless times. He left such a lovely inscription too. It sounds as though there is a side to the Major I did not get to see. Was it common for him to bring you gifts? Not common, but if he had been away for some time, he would bring me a small memento from his travels. He hasn't done that in some time, though. Uh, the toys that were with the book uh, were also the gift. The toys that were with the book, were they also a gift from the Major? They were. I'm afraid they may have gathered some dust being in the storage room for so long. I kept them in hope of giving them to my child when the time comes. Fucking hell, that's a bit harsh. Jeez. Oh, 1v1 in your wow. It sounds as though he had always cared about you. His presence at the house was comforting for us both after father died, even if sometimes he was a little too overprotective. You spoke last night to the major support of my mum. That's right. Ever since I can remember, Felix has been around. It seems as though she has a number of support networks. The major, her friendship with the Countess, not forgetting Monsieur Da Silva. Ooh. Maman has many friends. I know how she may seem to Moss, but once you break the hard shell... There is a further shell waiting to be broken. Oh, oh <laughs> very good, detective. Boom. Oh, your mum bought me homemade biscuits. Yes, she did. Forgive me, mademoiselle. I only jest. Yeah, you know why she bought me homemade biscuit? But she made this ginger nut. It's quite all right. You are not the only one that feels a razor tongue. She's grateful you are here, especially now. Whether she shows it or not. Yeah. Sick burn. I'm on fire. Fire. Woo. I'm still yet to see the version of Madame that Mademoiselle Angeline speaks of. I'm not sure I will get the hopes up of a budding friendship. Speaking with the commentators yesterday, she did not have a great opinion on the major. They have often come to blows when it concerns Maman. They are both trying to protect her, but they themselves cannot seem to get along. She spoke of his desire to join the, uh, how do you describe it, social elite. Hmm. This isn't the first time she has vocalized that concern. She thinks the Major was just using our family name to make his way to the top. And you do not agree? I will not deny he has shown interest in Maman's social circles, but they have been friends since even before I was born. Surely all those years of friendship was not just to raise his social standing. Hmm, maybe. Mademoiselle Angeline obviously does not believe what the commentator has to say about the Major, about the jealousy that drives her scandalous theory. If I may be so bold, did the Major contribute to the house? How do you mean, Detective? I imagine a house of this size is rather... Costly, keeping it in the immaculate condition it is in. Maman looks after the financial side of the house, but I think she has had to ask him more than once for a contribution of sorts. 
Oh. I have, have everything that I need to push man and band spot on her secret. Fucking let's roll. I go in here. Do I need to do anything? Yep. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Hey Taylor, welcome to the stream, welcome to the show. How are you doing this fine Thursday evening? Hope you are well. Welcome, welcome. Uh, with the vice count gone, the mayor stepped up actually farther for you. I must take a different approach if I am to un- This will not get me- Oh, here we go again. the logic in it order and method is there something well it's obvious in it it's the fucking father it's not don't take a genius to work out jeez uh i'm doing good your time from college nice how was college today is this really necessary? Yes. I think that is all. What? Don't I need to talk to her? I need to talk to Angelini and shit. What the fuck? It is done. I got to talk to the fucking thingy. What do you mean? I oh, know. Never mind. I must act on. Order and method. That is. What be fucking this? It gotta be something to do with the father figure. This will not get me any. Cl I must take a different. Pink, pink, pink. It's got to be something to do with this. I cannot see the lot. Uh, not that then. Not that just an idea. Hang on. I didn't help run. But she keeps him around. But why? Let me try that. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Yeah. I'm actually trying to deny it because I just had a major feeling in some capacity. 
In here, bitch. I've got questions. Is this really necessary? Fish on Katanja had held the major for so long. Who I allow in my house is none of your business. Here we go. I do not have to explain anything to you. I did not think you were one for charity. I would not expect you to think much of anything. There is no need to talk on it any further, but I'm sure you will remember that, financially speaking, we have had our issues. I have all the evidence I need to confront Madame Van der Bosch. It approached it is my approach to question that I must consider. You will no doubt be dispensive when I push. It may only be the that may only be the way as she would not give up the uh uh too easily. Evident to I can't read. Uh, ever will not give up any information that she does not want too easily. And yet you allow the major to reside here, even without contributing. Why did you protect the name of Mr. Hagen so that one? Need I repeat Fuck. myself, detective? There is no need to men and women can remain friends without any romantic involvement. I'm sure you are aware of that. Your insistent questioning on such trivial matters are getting on my last nerve. Ah, oh, fucked it. There is a murderer and a blackmailer to be yep. found. Yep, no, that yep. That is your job here. Okay, I might be able to pull it back. The declaration will love me enough to you then, judging by the major wearing letter. It will not the only one he's I want to send to Clarence. Oh. How many times do I have to tell you? There was no romantic feelings between us. I have grown weary of this conversation, Poirot. There is nothing more to say. There's something about your relations that you are awfully refusing to elaborate on. The love letter, the housing. You you continue to answer my question and defense the nation just that there was shared love between you. I have explained Fuck. this to you already. You really are trying my patience. Madame, you continue to withhold the truth. And you continue to get on my last nerve. I am not obliged to tell you every detail of my private life. But when it impedes my investigation... Believe what you wish. You clearly have no idea what you're talking about. My personal life has nothing to do with your investigation. I don't know I hope how to redo it. Said. Keep your nose out of my business. Restart. There we go. Who am I allowing? All right. I w he was a man that required no protection, detective. Especially from me. That is the impression I had of him, which is why your defensive stance warrants questioning. There we go. Nailed it. Your insistent questioning on such trivial matters are getting on my last nerve. There is a murderer and a blackmailer to be found. That is your job here. Uh, yeah, that one. How many times do I have to tell you? There was no romantic feelings between us. I have grown weary of this conversation, Poirot. There is nothing more to say. Uh, top one. I have explained oh, fuck. this to you already. It was the second one. You really are trying my patience. Madam, you but believe Ah, me. fucked it again. Okay, let's try again. Who am I at? All right. He was a man... How many? There we go. You continue to relax and answer my question. Defensive nature is just that they shared love between you. Madam, you continue to withhold the truth. And you continue to get on my last nerve. I am not obliged to tell you anything. Oh, I, I can't now fight them twice. But when it impedes my investigation. If only you were this focused on finding the blackmailer and... Madam. Very well. I did not lie about how we met. I was attending an event, raising money for... Oh, I cannot recall now. It had been some Ooh, well time I. since I had returned home and was rather missing English soil. I was aware of Felix's invitation, or at least the, that there was to be several British officers attending the party. 
And that is where our friendship began. He was a warm reminder of home, and I enjoyed conversing with him. We shared walks in the park and read together. As I said, he was a welcome distraction from the days spent alone. I shall go no further with the details, but I will say, I had no intention on being unfaithful to my husband. It was never our plan to go that far. Once I found out I was pregnant, I knew it had to stop. Uh. The Viscount never questioned Mademoiselle's birth? In his mind, he had no reason to, and he shouldn't have had to. It was my mistake to bear. If he knew the truth, our lives would have been ruined. Oh, shit. I told Felix that he was to stay away, but he had no intention to. He became an uncle figure to Angeline, and they grew closer after Edwin's death. I was right. I could not tell her the truth. Too much time had passed. The secret remained only between him and I. Until now. And what were the major thoughts on revealing the truth? He wanted to tell her everything. He wanted her to know exactly who he was. But I told him no. It would not have been the poignant reconciliation that he expected. She would not understand. Demon. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the letters. I tried to retrieve them from the safe after everyone had retired last night. But when I opened the safe, they were nowhere to be found. I assumed he must have hidden them somewhere else. When I entered the study this morning, they were as visible as a red notice on a police station wall. I would appreciate if you did not compare them to the face of a wanted felon. Pardon, madame. But that does mean someone else in the house has seen them. I, I don't understand. Why would they return them? A mystery that is still yet to be solved. Madame were beaten to the safe by another. It seemed we ought to have a thief within the wall to add to the list of criminals. But a thief that would turn the spoils? I can assume that secret had been used for a ransom. It must be. But I have told no one. And the Major? Felix promised me he wouldn't tell a soul. And I believed him. Not even if he wanted to. If the Major let slip even once throughout the years, Perhaps it intoxicates state. It's a secret that many would seek an opportunity to gain from. You did not think anyone knew, and that is why you disregarded the letter. If you bow to these criminals, they will only try to claw more from you. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame. I fucking knew it. I knew it. I knew he was a dad. I knew it. I called it. Uh, the uncertain connection between uh, the major and the ransom have been resolved. The Major being blackmailed, the letter was not written by his hand. What remained unresolved is why the Major being blackmailed. Do you case of extortion under one roof, the question of relationship must be asked. The Major secret anything but obvious from this letter. I now have a blackmailer, a murderer and a weapon to find. If the correct process is followed, they should be found swiftly. I shall take my leave, the room will be revealed enough new insight in Madame and Major's life. I had my suspicion that Madame Van der and Major shared a romantic relationship. I did not expect the revelation of his connection to Madame Mademoiselle, An Mademoiselle Angeline. I am now one of the very few that hold Madame's secret. Um, fuck it. Detective Poirot, how is your investigation coming? Monsieur Starling, I must admit, I have learned much more than I was expecting to. You'll be wrapping the case up soon, then. Well, hopefully by the end of the night, but yeah, pretty much. No one has never finished learning, monsieur. And in this case, I shall need to continue if I am to find the Major's killer. 
It might help to vocalize your thinking. I'm all ears. Mr. Stern offered an interesting concept. If I were to state the current position of my investigation while holding back certain truths, the guilty party may not realize when they healed and revealed their hand. Monsieur, would you gather the guests and staff in the salon? Right away, detective. Can I ask for what reason? I shall reveal all once everyone is together. Achievement! Alright. As soon as this loads up, I'm going to run an ad, I'm going to go to the toilet, and we'll start chapter 6. Ah, oh, big up the piano. And this is why I walk in like a, a pro. Search. Oh, cutscene. Detective, what is the meaning of all this? Madam, I ask that you all lend me your ears for only a few moments. What I have to say is of great significance to everyone. You are all invited here to celebrate the engagement of Mademoiselle Angeline van den Bosch and Monsieur Gédéon Demir, the coming together of two prevalent families. But the celebrations were short-lived, as Major Felix Egan was found dead in his study by a young servant of the house. It then became my responsibility and obligation as a detective to uncover the truth behind his demise. My initial examination of his study exposed a number of things I did not expect to find, things I have no desire to divulge at this time, but what I can say is this. It was no simple murder. A letter demanding ransom for a continued silence confirmed this. I am sure some, if not all of you, have heard whispers of a series of blackmails that have plagued the social elite in recent weeks. After hearing of the letters in the major study, you may ask if it was him behind the letters. You may further ask if he was preparing his next threat to another unsuspecting victim. It is a question that crossed even my mind. That was until I sought the truth. That, in fact, it was the Major that had fallen victim to our blackmailer, Mysterieux. Last night, I spoke with you all, confirmed your whereabouts in the house over the course of the evening, and while I would have expected such questioning to reveal a potential suspect, what I learned was that it could not have been one of you. What do you mean, not one of us? The man was stabbed. He hardly did that to himself. There is still a killer in the house. Pardon, Monsieur, if you would allow me to finish. It could not have been only one of you. Rather, a partneria, a partnership, in cahoots, if you will. Conversations today have revealed facts that I was not expecting to discover. And although they may have muddied and complicated my investigation, what I must do to bring the guilty parties to justice has become clearer. Those of you that spun stories in an attempt to confuse and derail my investigation have made a grave mistake in underestimating my intelligence. Other detectives may fall for such deception, but I can assure you, Detective Poirot is no such fool. My investigation is far from over, and swift justice shall be dealt to those that have committed such appalling acts and have continued to mislead and lie to protect themselves. Now, I must continue, mon enquête, and I shall leave you to consider that you may be beside a cold-hearted killer. Bonsoir. Monsieur Sterling, un moment. Wow, what a stigma move. That is a... Um, Speech, detective. That is a move and a half that he just pulled right there. Merci, but it was not made to entertain. More to warn the guilty parties that I am hot on their heels, no matter how clever they believe themselves to be. Well, if there is anything I can do. I'd like to search the guest bedrooms. Is that really necessary? The murderer remains at large, and there is still no sign of the weapon. I would say that makes them essential. Of course. I still just cannot imagine any of them being guilty of his murder. It may be hard to imagine, but it is the truth. When you returned to the study last night, did you know anything different from the previous visit? Nothing. But I was so preoccupied with the Major. Sorry, Detective. 
Should I have? Perhaps it was just my mind playing games again. Maybe one of the guests got lost and wandered in. I guess I've taken the wrong turn. Find yourself in the major bedroom first. I'm sure they would not have proceeded for the next door unless they were not lost at all. Who had, who had access to the safe in the major study? Master Hagen had a key, obviously, and Lady Vandenbosch. Should the mail quite sure Archibald also had a copy of the key. It is not something one would easily forget. Regarding access to the safe, you have seen the contents before? When requested, aye. If something is required from there when Master Hagen is not around. Forgive me. If he is not around, how is it you access this safe? Ooh. It's not what you think, detective. What I think is that you have been trusted with a copy of the key and you have lied to me about it. I only lied because of the trouble I can get into with Lady Vandenbosch. At this moment, monsieur, you should be more worried about the trouble you shall find yourself in with the law. I know how it will sound, but I lost my key. I must have set it down somewhere and it has been tidied oh. away. Master Hagen asked so rarely for me to go in the safe, I didn't think it would be missed. Mr. Stirring's story of a lost safe strike me as rather coincidental. The major safe had broken into a document ransacked, a letter involving Madame Vanderbilt's secret left out. It's a crime with no appar apparent purpose. Though the matter regarding the contest we, mu we must be discussed. I should have said this morning. I'm sorry. Monsieur. I am not quite sure you understand the severity of what has happened. I am well aware, detective. I just thought she would be able to help. Would you allow a man with a smoking gun to remove his bullet from a victim's chest? I suppose not. I understand that Mr. Durham only trying to help. Surely he must have seen what it could do for the integrity of my investigation. I would like to begin my searches now. Since it is closest, I will start with the West Wing. I may not be back when you return. Here is the key to the other rooms. Please return it when you're done. Merci. I shall guard it with my life. First, that played the common test of visit. Oh, new my map unlocked. Oh, before I can accuse anyone of any crime, I'm not sure if they are working alone or with another. This is a perfect opportunity to find evidence of any conclusion, collusion, and look for the murder weapon. Here we go. Alright, I'm going to quickly run an ad. One minute, uh, one minute 30 ad. I uh, hope you enjoy it, and I shall be right back as soon as possible. Ah, rock and roll, shall we? Let's solve this murder, chapter 6. I found something. Your search history. Oh, okay. What am I doing? Okay, let's go do this. I go down to it. Oh, okay. I guess I got. If I can just stay here, I should take myself and make myself known before entering. Okay. You using my desktop or oh, make file find all to open that. Uh, well, oh, are you using my desktop? Make. Oh, for me to find an auto open that for me to do quest. Not bad. Sound like a fun game. I approve. The common test room. It would not be rude to address her before searching the room. Now, nah, fuck it. Let's go search the room now. Uh -huh. Yep. So the same thing every time.
I wonder a modern technology why Joy Id must have some music in one home. Perhaps a happy couple engagement has someone in particular romantic mood. Maybe she was jealous of him. Ah. Plant, yeah. Same shit. Looked out the window. Perhaps a present for the family and a thank you for the hospitality. Yep. Huh. Yep. Good look at everything just in case. Hmm. You never know in this game. Yep. All right, done a lap. Let's talk to her. Detective, what a pleasure! I did not expect to see you in my chambers. In a purely professional capacity, I can assure you. Ah, oh, what? We're not going to get any, Bruh. There is no need to act so stiff, detective. Wow, maybe you play your cards right. I might act so stiff. <laughs> Madame, after the revelation of your actions last night, I'm afraid my sense of humor is all but gone. I will not apologize again for merely trying to help. Shall we get straight to it then? Let us not waste your time any further, detective. I saw you conversing with one of the young servants yesterday. That would be Inga. She has been one of the most promising young women that has come from the shelter. Madame Vandenbosch took in a young lady from your shelter. There is no need to sound so surprised, detective. She does have a heart. But she threw Flora out. Hmm. I did not mean to sound so cruel. I just did not expect Madame to hire someone of that background after the incident with her previous yeah. Florette. People change, detective. You should not judge someone on their past actions. Believe me, Countess. I know that only too well. I commend you on your dedication for the women you help. It is most honourable. Be careful, detective. That almost sounded like a compliment. It is your actions in this house that have been questionable, madame. Your work outside is something that many more should take note of. We do what we can. Have you ever to find many of the girls from the sheltered work? We wouldn't be doing a very good job if I could only help one girl. I in fact found work for one of them as a maid in Monsieur Da Silva's house recently. Oh, really? She has fitted into Monsieur's home well. What is better, detective? That she remained in an abusive house? Or she is able to rebuild her life with an honest wage in a prosperous house? When put like that, is she happy in her position? The happiest she has been in years. I check in with them all as often as possible. And if there was a problem, I would know. Oh. I'm glad to hear that more girls are building a better future for themselves and it will help from the common steps that have been able to happen. Merci, madame. Alright, let's have a double check around this place. Well, even though we've checked already. Oh, hello. A first aid kit for the medical equipment, bandages, plastic, antiseptic, and a pair of scissors. I knew I missed something. Of course I did. Go ahead. Perhaps a little uh, rushed my response of you examining the major body. And now an apology. Well, detective, you certainly have changed your tune. There was something I was still unsure of. You mentioned that your training was some years ago. From my days as a nurse, oui. If that is so, why would you have brought several pieces of equipment usually found in a physician's bag? One must always be prepared, detective. Prepared? At an engagement celebration? If I had not brought them, I would not have been able to assist you last night. Perhaps you should be thankful for my precaution and not so suspicious. And had she not brought them at all, I would not be able to ask such a question. Merci, madame. Suspicious. Hmm. 
Ah, but why would she buy a uh, first aid kit? Mm. Well, I believe I shall make my leave from your room and go check the others. Ah, the ever guarded Jacqueline Conrad. It's time that I should question her for, on her own conversation with Major before searching the room. Now, nah, let's search it first. Grammar phone, yep. Covered. Still not seeing anything of interest. Fireplace, yep, 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 yep. I know that something will come up after the conversation. But let's have a look before the conversation. Oh, this was my old room when I got here. <laughs> yep, and beautiful white blanket. There we go. Detective, what can I do for you? Mademoiselle, I am sure you understand my reasoning for such intrusion. If it's going to clear my name, be my guest. If you wouldn't mind answering some questions, it can hopefully be cleared faster. Let's like start with your relationship with the Major. Like I said, he's not the man he wants everyone to think he is. Oui. But how is it you came to that conclusion? You don't really want me to recount every conversation I've had with him, do you? There is one particular I had in mind. Tell me about your argument. An argument would imply it was a two-way conversation. And that is not how it was? Here it is. I've been helping Angeline get exposure, her marriage to Gideon is big news, and his work is really paving the way for others. I saw the chance to get their names out there, and he didn't like it. What was there not to like? Your guess is as good as mine, Detective. But if I had to, I'd say he was jealous it wasn't his name at the top of the article. And his reason to storm off? Oh, you know about that. Let's just say I didn't accept his pathetic attempt to get me to stop the story. If you're gonna try and pay someone off, at least make it worth their while. Oh, you're trying to pay her off? I thought the maid would only be supportive of Mamma Angeline. There must have been more why he would not want her success to be known. I'm sure you've grown weary of the subject, but miss your beckers. You've really got a fascination with that guy, huh? I would not say fascination. An interest, perhaps. Ah. Well, I'll save you the bother of trying to find out more about him. He's not that interesting. In fact, he's a bit of a wimp if you ask me. That is not the impression I got of him. That's because you've only seen the side of him he wants you to. He knows what to say in front of the right people. But behind closed doors, he's cold. Ah, the facade. Clueless in what way? Let me guess. The first thing he told you was that he was a union leader. No, the voice of the people. A man that is proud of his work is not something to be sneered at. Don't get me wrong, he has a way with words, and he can certainly rally a crowd. But that's about it. At the end of the day, he's a representative and nothing more. He's got to play the part, not just learn the lines. Mademoiselle did not think particularly highly on Monsieur Becker's. She's a strong, independent woman, but used to the term wimp in an unnecessary attack of his character. Merci, mademoiselle. Sure thing, detective. And if you change your mind on that exclusive about that shooting... If I do change it, you shall be the first to know. Alright, let Oh, hello. Among them, a recent article by Jackie Conrad about the riot linked to Ernesto Factory. Lethal strike turn a loss of lives and violent breaks out on the front line. Following the tragic event in the city that had darkened the spirit of the people and brought to the screeching halt the rising defiance of the working class, the area had been called, called and off and the police presence at seeing what has increased. Factory security forces have been asked to step down and the power handed over to law enforcement services. Workers lay down their tools, switched off all the machinery and stood together shoulder to shoulder as they fight for fair pay and condition raised on. Was started at peaceful protests by those employed at the factory have turned into battle of class with support of the workers coming in from all over the city. Although the reports have not been confirmed, sources state that violent broke out following a second wave surge of supporters. Official numbers may have not been published, 
but it believed that many of eight workers had lost their lives in fighting. The workers' front line being considered as a representation of the people and working class of Belgium that now refused in such a demanding condition at such a demeaning and inefficient wage. Chief Com Commissioner La Rouge have confirmed that the outbreak of violence and resulting civilian death are being investigated and an official statement to be made in the coming days. Jacqueline Conrad. Oh, hello. So there was... Oh, hello, more stuff. I presume it belonged to Jackie. Facing a good story may lead to some precious scenarios. All kicking off. Becky oh. like sat with makes your office in her room. You must bring her work with her everywhere. Mr. Antique spotted leaving the Velvet Ticket Friday at 11.15. Came to her house had been approached on her neighbour and land, bored deer and duck, Maggie to follow up. Miss Bonte found her husband in the in their marital bed a young maid servant. Testament of maid needed. Young maids uh. Mr. Denault overheard the Cackling and Crow speaking poorly to King Leopold. He said question what I did. We said doubtful, sceptical, shady. Note from Francis by Monday. A young maidservant with no name. Hmm. We know a maidservant. Ah, oh, bitch. Go right ahead. I was surprised to learn Mitchell De Silva and made your work together. All Felix cared about was money and filling his pockets with it. That's why he got into bed with De Silva. <gasps> they were sleeping together. What? The Major was not in need of money, though. Need and want are two very different things. Did he need to move here and leech off the madame? No, but he wanted to. Tell me your opinion on their work together. As far as I know, De Silva hired him to work security. He was worried what could happen to his precious factories if things got ugly. And your reporters were there to cover the story when it did turn that way. My reporters go where there is news to be told. And you predicted the <clears throat> violence would break out? Anyone could see that was going to happen. If you ask me, Hugo should have acted sooner. Merci, mademoiselle. I believe that I had everything in this room. I mean, look round. Cupboard, pocket knife, fire. Desk, window, which let me do the window again just in case. What, pl any plants in here? Nope. Alright, we're good to move. Let's rock and roll, shall we? Next, next room. Here we are, Mademoiselle Angeline and Gideon room. I wonder what we shall find. No question, just, just looking. There does not seem to be anything of interest in here. It seemed that you used to be closer. Perhaps their recent behaviour on made a facade. Could it be possible that Gideon Demur achievement collaborated with Zachariah? Oh, they do look close. A roaring fire. Can't, can't pry on my son, get through there. We'll do the bed last. And five o'clock. A window. Hmm. A window. One, yep. Yeah. Hmm. Ah. I could have mistaken my own. Is that it? I found nothing. Nah, no, 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 no. This room too clean. There got to be something. Let me, let me double check everywhere. We did the photograph. We did the fire. We did the clock. We've done the bed. We've done the globe. We've done the window. There's, there got to be something. There's something about this room that don't feel right. It too clean. It too clean. I'm suspicious. Oh, 
I think they feel right. With the rest room search, I should make my way to the guest rooms on the east first floor. There must be some evident con conclusion, evident conclusion somewhere. Something don't feel right. That room was too tidy. I'll talk to you in a minute. I'll talk to you now. Mademoiselle, we meet again. Bonjour, Monsieur Poirot. Pardon, Detective Poirot. Just a detective is quite all right. Bon, can I help you with something? It was you, it was you that alerted the house to the major body, was it not? I was taking him a plate of food, but he didn't answer to my knocking. You then entered the study. I did. He wasn't moving. He just lay there. I did not mean to upset you again. Seeing him there would be troubling for anyone, and I'm sure it is not a memory you wish to relive. Tell me about your relationship with the other staff. I suppose we're like a family. We argue, but most of the time we get along. You must all be quite close then. Some more than others. You refer to whom, mademoiselle? Well, Maman Hay, sorry, Rihanna. She's been here the longest, and she's very close with Lizzie on account of Luke. Oh, that man was our Elizabeth, late fiancé, connects them. Maman Hay is Luke's <sighs> You did not know that. Oh, shit. I thought she would have said. She talks about him all the time. It must have been awful losing him in those riots. Apparently, he was right at the front when they were charged. They didn't stand a chance. If I had been the one responsible for his death, I wouldn't want Maman Hay looking Oh. Me. Fuck. Okay. So Luke, who was Lizzie, Lizzie's fiancé, would part the riots that we just read about, and he he won the eight people that died. Mademoiselle Rihanna, uh, Maman Ray, she has expressed her desire for revenge. Every time she talks about what happened. How would that the knowledge of Luke's death had eluded me for so long? The death of a brother is certainly motive enough. I did not see an aggressive side of Mademoiselle Rihanna when we spoke. Uh, I wonder. Achievement! If she would act on such impulses for revenge if the opportunity arose. I guess you wouldn't know anything about life on the streets. It is not an experience I have had to face personally, but I understand that many are forced into it and the lifestyle that comes with it. The lifestyle of a thief, you mean? Put rather bluntly, we. Oui. You are the first officer that has not taken one look at me and pulled out the handcuffs. Mademoiselle, I can see you have turned your life around, and I commend you on your efforts. Without the Countess, I would probably be rotting in a cell somewhere. Ma'am, we are getting closer to the truth. They're an obvious alliance to the common test and the understandable one at all. Merci, Mademoiselle. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, here we go. Inmate, I'm... In may seem nothing more than a young innocent maid, but there's something that she was holding. If I'm to solve the case before me, I must learn what it is. Ah, oh shit, kicking off. Okay, this is good. This is what we need. No, what? How? Okay, where do I? Ah, uh, in here. It's like a ride bedroom. Wait, 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 wait. Before we go into Zachariah's bedroom, maybe we should have a little look around and see what we can find. I need to stop doing that accent. It, I'm going to get in trouble. Have I already been here? Margot's room. Jackie's room. I've done upstairs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Zachariah's room. Oh, 
I wonder if Mitchell Zachariah is as seemingly innocent as his brother. I should speak with him before searching his room. Now let's search it first, then we can just do the little bits afterwards. We're on fire, because Dan, yep. Well, they're the knife there, so we want to look at that prior row. Nope, alright then. A fallen snow, yep. A plant. Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. That what you call in an incestual relationship. Super Smash Bros. Monsieur Demir, I hope you are feeling better today. Nothing a good night's sleep couldn't fix. Très bien. I wonder if you would be up to discussing certain matters with me. Oh, what, you two Super Smash? Now, do you just Super Smash? Or are you more into Super Smash Ultimate? You know, the question got to be asked. Whatever you need. I thought you were going to say I whip you could smash now. I generally, I thought, well. <laughs> uh, with, me free. Me free. Uh, I'm sure dealing with a major body brought up any familiar emotions. I lost my taste for death a long time. It had to be done. I'm certainly in no rush to be carrying a dead body again, though. Most understandable. I shall extend the same gratitude to you as I did to your brother. You've spoken to him already. How is he? Perhaps that should be a question you ask him yourself. Yeah, maybe. I spoke to your brother about your past. I bet he had a lot to say. He always did have an opinion on the war. When I say your past, I refer to your past as brothers. I mean, surely there must be something you two can play. I'm sure there is a game out there. Oh, pardon me. Uh, okay, well, what did he say? It seems you both had the same sentiment for this party. Perhaps the bridges that you thought were once burnt are in fact primed to be reconstructed. We'll see how probable that reconstruction is going to be. Until he sees my point of view, I don't know how we can move forward. What is there for him to understand before the bond can be repaired? He lost his friends in the war, the same as everyone. But somehow he has forgiven. I'm sorry, Detective, I can't. Gideon just doesn't understand that. After speaking with Mitchell Gideon about his brother's state of mind, I think the best thing for them to both would be a reconsider reconciliation. There's something about Mitchell Zachariah's story that would leave it out, though. The death of his friends and comrade weigh heavy on him. Your brother was talking with the contest while in the salon. I was not aware they were so close. Those two, close. They must share something in common to be able to hold the conversation for the time they did. If there is one thing I know about my brother, it's that he will not. Uh, no. He cannot be rude. He just doesn't have it in him. Ooh. Was it not your brother that punched Monsieur Hagen? Ah, that's different. He was asking for it. If you put my brother in a room with five socialites like her, he would work his way around every single one of Ooh. them, offering his Ooh. full attention and finest manners. Oh, would he? Merci for your assistance, monsieur. All right, let's have a little nosy now. How we speak to him? Hi. Cigarette butts. The room is littered with mess. Cigarette butts discarded right next to the ashtray. Why would you put cigarette butts next to the ashtray? An ornamental dagger from Sakura time in the war. Yeah, why would you just leave that out? Just, you know, that the murder investigation when someone would stab and you have to leave a knife out. Always got a particular item I found while conducting my search. The dagger. I wondered how long it would take for that to become an issue. Is this the dagger I see before me? Noble the mind. 
and something else that I cannot remember the line. I shall give you the opportunity to explain the reason for it being here before I jump to any conclusions. It was going to be a wedding gift for Gideon. I've maybe not been the best brother in recent years. I thought this could make up for some of it. After what happened to the Major, I thought it was a bit tasteless. You did not see it fitting to tell me you were harboring a rather sizable knife in your room? Yeah, I didn't bring it up. No point. I wouldn't say harboring. And I wasn't expecting to be a suspect in a murder. Merci for your assistance. Alright, one little look before I bugger off out of this room. Just to double check. Cigarette butts. Fireplace. Knife. Drum phone. Window plant. Go, cool, go, everything. Cool, go. Let's go. It's your Becker room. Without him here, I'm free to search it. Alright. Let's do the. We'll go round right again. Nice clock. Yep, yep, yep. This. A book. Inside Kachugo notebook. A hasty scribble of his garden, a meeting with who I'm assumed. Ernesto. Curious. It seemed he'd been tempted to write a speech of some kind. Unsuccessfully, though. I wonder, did he fit a pattern or behaviour with you go? You underestimate the power of man defines. Your men, you are in a position to bring all this to an end. All we ask is what we deserve. If you do not retract the men, they will met with equal force, too forceful. The weapon may beat our bodies, but will not bruise our heart spirits. These are the men we have built our great nation country and will continue to. Money will not save your soul. Damn, that's deep. Plant. Uh, yep, yep, yep. A window. Yep, yep, yep. Hmm. And a team. Yep, yep, yep. With so many siblings, it must have been difficult for Hugo to get attention. At uh, Hugo's on the right. Do I recognise any of them? No, oh, maybe. Maybe. Let's do a lap again just to make sure we got everything before we leave. Alright, so I don't need to look at any more windows now because I got the achievement. The bin there for Michel de Silver room. So you talk to him now and Monsieur de Silva, I am sure you understand the necessity for this type of search. Not really, detective. Your speech was rather spirited. But it did not give me much faith in your investigation. I have not had my abilities questioned to my face by one of those I suspect of a crime before. Well, if you wish to prove me wrong. You should hurry up and find Felix's killer. Hmm. And I hope, with your help, monsieur, I shall. Madame Vanna's boss spoke of your work with her late husband. Yes, I helped him invest some money. Unfortunately, he was not the businessman he thought he was. Madame Vandenbosch had a very similar view. At least he could have taken solace that you were both in the same position. I think you're confused, detective. 
It was Edwin that lost his fortune. Oh, shit. Not I. Forgive my naivete. If you were helping him make viable investments, would you not have seen the same opportunity for yourself? I told him about the opportunities. I did not tell him to put his whole family's wealth into it. The prospect of doing good meant more to him than his profit margins. He was bound to fail. The business declared bankruptcy. It did, until it was purchased for a fraction of its worth and made the new owner a small fortune. I began to see Mitchell to deal with a more ruthless side. Now those vice count were trying to at least make a positive change. Perhaps he was missing Monsieur de Silva cutthroat edge. What we spoke of last night regarding Madame Van der Bosch. Everything that I want to say on that matter has already been said. Has it though? I understand, Monsieur. But what I would like to know is, was the late Viscount aware of your feelings towards his wife? Excuse me, detective, but you have crossed the line. Cross the line like an attempt to bankrupt a business partner and friend so that you be able to swoop in and impress a certain target of your affections. Oh shit! You make such ridiculous accusations without a shred of proof. Your reaction at the mere suggestion is proof enough, monsieur. While I cannot arrest you for betrayal of a friend, I can hope your conscience does not forget and that will be punishment enough. Oh shit! Monsieur de Silva's actions are not criminal offence, but their penalty of deception and deceit. He would surely receive a life sentence. If he had gone to such length before, what would stop him from committing a similar act again? It's time to the Major. I know you are well for the Major, but what do you know of his finances? He didn't have much to speak of. I was always surprised at the life he lived. Surprised in what way? Well, considering it wasn't that long ago he came to me asking about work, I didn't think he was in such good financial shape. You offered him a position? Nothing that he was willing to lower himself to. Achieve That's when he began talking about what else he could do for him. What, what that achievement toward your 300 hours? Is that what you, you just use it for yourself? Ah, fair enough, fair enough. It is an achievement. 300 hours, not bad. And the bang on 300 hours, I must say. Uh, nothing would wouldn't allow him to sell, but that when he began talking about what else he could do for me. The mayor worked security for your factories. If you can call what him and his team did security. For the money I paid, I did not expect them to be so reckless. Oh, here we go. It was a considerable amount you paid him? There's no need to divulge amounts, but it was certainly more than was expected. One would expect the bid that Monsieur de Silva Calibre to have agreed the price of the major services. Why would he allow the major to barter more? Tell me about the major security team. He said they were all professionals, but I saw nothing of the sort. He said he had worked with them all in the army as their superior officer. They were men that could be trusted. But that was not the case? I had not even met them before they arrived on site. They brought their own equipment. It looked like they knew what they were doing. And this equipment? It included the weapons that injured and killed the workers? It was not much of a choice, detective. I said they didn't need them, but Felix said it was essential. He said... Oh, for fuck's sake, I hit A again, my bad. The more Monsieur talked and the shadier dealing with the major become, it began to sound like the riot was no accident. For now. Wait a minute. So the major, hang on. I think I've just figured it out. Major and his team went for Ernesto. There were eight deaths. The eight deaths were one, one of them were Luke, Luke who was Rihanna's sister. It was also Elizabeth's fiance. All right. I've narrowed it down to two people. Oh. I let the state in the blackmail would reveal information of a questionable business dealing. Mr. De Silva, at first you may question the nature of this letter, but by conclusion, you will know that what you have fought so hard to keep hidden could be far, far, far from it. 
You have spent years feeding off the hard work and backs of others and offering nothing in return. Your work will continue to take their lives with their own hands, day after day with your shoddy, damaged and dangerous machines, the fraction of what they deserve. They have to deal with made while your pockets being fatter, lining them with more of your blood money. It's your worker that must pay the price. The mistreatment and pain you have caused does not only reside in the factory of your own, but houses that you live in. You do not value the lives of those that allow you to live the opulent life that you do. I will not allow that to continue. I can look no I can no longer sit back and watch you as you disregard any sense of integrity or morality and continue to remain of your self made pedestal, lorded over those who deserve so much more. It is time to pay the price for your crimes and cost and it will cost five thousand francs. It's a small price to pay for my silence. But if I do not receive it by Friday, it will be not be cash you are paying, but rather years behind bars. Bring the money to a small bound paper parcel. Uh, addressed to Miss Yorkodia, the post office, and Ruth on Ruth's death and Chapots. Give it to the cashier and leave. If you do have requested, you will not hear from me again, and you may continue your life of luxury. It obviously you do not value other lives, but I urge you consider what it's worth. I contract the partnership between Ernesto and Hugo, and missing Hugo's signature. 5.1. The agreement is governed by the Lords of the Kingdom of Belgium. Both parties agree to the following. Count workers' strikes shall cease in all manners and form. Factory flawed machine operation supervisors shall return their position immediately. Terms of above contracts shall be implemented and reluctantly relevant acted action taken directly. Signed. Monsieur de Silva, factory owner. Ms. Hugo Becker, union leader. Oh. A radio shot letter open out, all my brand new, like discarded on the floor. I feel like I've got a picture of what happened or who done it, but I'm not gonna say it until the end. But I think I figured it out already. Alright, everything in the room. Okay, cool. What is it now, detective? Let me do these two first. What were you expecting some correspondent this weekend? Excuse me? Detective, I think you are beginning to lose your mind. I do not think it is unreasonable to question why you would feel the need to bring a letter opener with you. Really, Detective? If I had stabbed a man with it, do you really think I would have left it lying out in my room? Monsieur de Silva, correct. It would have struck to believe someone would be so careless. The murder weapon remained somewhere in the house. Monsieur de Mir, I invited Monsieur Beckard so that the two might sit down and find some common ground. Yes, and no one asked them to. But surely it is beneficial to both parties. Your profits must have been affected. There are barely any profits to speak of. Why have those talks not taken place and the deal arranged? Monsieur Beckers has made no attempt to speak with me and offered no counter offer. The ball is in his court, Detective. Although Monsieur de Silva wagered and the treatment of the staff that had in question, it sounded as though he at least tried to resolve the issue, surprisingly, unlike Monsieur Beckers. Push on why Ernesto hid the letter. I have spoken of a potential blackmail ring, and yet you still kept your letter to yourself. It is none of your business, and it is nothing more than a cheap trick to have me admit something that is not true. If that were the case, it would be strange for you to have kept the letter and brought it with you, would it not? Your persistence is a trait I oh, do not... Oh, you're getting do. angry. We should just deal with her remain blunt, if not curt with him response to my questions. But it would be best act in courteous if I mean, uh, in a courteous and imperfect manner, so that maybe more common truth of a black mile letter and it content. Uh, there must be a reason you've justified hiding it. You do not have an enjoy it, monsieur. You must answer to it. That one. But, Even if there was some truth to it, demanding a ransom like that, they are delusional. 
I will be the judge of that. I would like to know about any and all evidence that may help my investigation. I trust there is nothing else you deem a waste of my time. Of course not. Of course not. Though you think I am harboring such illicit secrets, let uh, what a pathetic attempt to intimidate me. Nothing more. My bad. Uh, deal after deal had made while your pocket become fatter, lining more blood money. You won't have the value of life, the life, the opportun life that you do. Oh shit. Uh, I have never heard so much rubbish in all my life. I value those that work hard and deserve it. That suggests there are some that you do not respect. Yes, well, why should I praise someone for doing a poor job? You make me sound like some monster. I think it is time you told me which parts of your letter hold some truth. There's no need to discuss my Fuck. private matters. I think we are done. Shit, fucked it. Let's try again. I have spoken. It is not. If that. You. No reason, detective. Merely saving you from wasting your time. I will be the judge of that. I would like to know about any and all evidence that may help my investigation. I trust there is nothing. Of yeah, alright. Uh, was. That one. That's yeah. Monsieur, the letter does not only discuss your questionable business dealings, <laughs> but also cases of abuse against your staff. Both accusations that must be taken very seriously. Detective, there is a difference between telling a member of my staff what to do and abuse. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that if you don't want to talk to me. The game will make me reload it and judge you again. And it is you that decides where that line is drawn. In my house? Yes. It is. Yeah! Yeah! I should not have been pressed. Achievement! On a subject of how we treat the star, he had nothing to hide. There should be no need to such a reaction. Do you have an idea what staff member may have expressed their views? Please stop calling it that. I treat all my servants exactly how I always have, and no one has complained before. A donkey moon. That does not mean your behavior is appropriate. They have one chance. If they are not doing the job they are hired to do, they are gone. You would be surprised how many staff expect an easy ride. I did not expect Monsieur to treat his staff the same as his friend, but I also did not expect him to treat them like stray dogs. Is there a specific member of staff that may have expected such a ride? There is one girl, a new maid. I didn't expect great things from her, but Comtesse de Vos promised me she could do what was required. If I'm the young girl that Commodore spoke of, perhaps the position she find in the girl are not the best fit. That is all for now. Oh. Oh, how many how how many more human? Alright. Hey now, we could we could actually hundred percent this game live on stream. I'm on form. How do I leave? Do I leave? Oh shit, we got stuff to do. Okay, so to get to an impossible conclusion. Alright. Something I all right, never mind. Oh, fuck me. Okay, order and method. Uh, okay, hang on. Many there we go. If Jack opinions, you don't value Shugo particularly high. Would he collaborate with anyone else, I wonder?
Alright, Gideon's room. Nope. What that? Things are beginning to become. The Demi Bro is showing relationship enough to suggest that they would not have worked together. It can't be this. It can't be something to do with her. This will not get me any. Black my own letter. I cannot see the lot. Is there something? Oh, here we go. Here we fucking go. Be something to do with the woman. Let's take it. Knife. I must take a different approach. I can't injure you here, but I fucking I. I must act on thought and fact. There gotta be a link between Archie and her. Only one I can think of. Yeah, sorry. I've sorry, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to put my brain to work. Maybe that? But why would that be a thing? I just wanna allow me but what and fuck it. Order and method. No. That I must take a different approach if I am to uncover the truth. Ness. <laughs> I mean, obviously, he demonstrates she's smart. Maybe that one? I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. She and Ernesto confirmed each other alibis. It's possible they may be concluded with the Kaluli with the murder, the major. Can I find anything to support this? Things are beginning to become. I am doubtful the duo would collaborate. Would Ernesto deal with another member of health? Perhaps someone who never confirmed an alibi. Okay. Ah, what about that? What a revelation! And that's don't strike me as such a sort of man who asks for help, no matter how important. And then surely that would be. Okay, well, I can't do any more. 
No, you're being quiet. I'm just trying to figure it out in my head. What is it now? Did you speak to the commentator directly about hiring a servant from the shelter? She approached me. I thought it was rather brash. In what way? Assuming that I would want to take on another servant, and one from such a troubled background. She is running the charity, not I. Sure, there's something you're keeping from me. Your business relationship with Major obviously toe in the line of legality. When he came to me, I told him that with the factories on strike and my profits pouring down the drain, I had nothing for him. But he said he could help me get them all back to work and the factories earning. His rates were steep, but he said he knew what needed to be done, and he was prepared to do it. A week passed and they were all still on strike. In fact, even more had joined them. Are oh, you getting angry? He made excuse after excuse, demanding more and more money for the job to be done. But he never actually told me what he was going to do. The riots. I had no idea they were going to charge them like that. How was I meant to know? And even following such a tragedy, he continued to demand money from you. Knew it. Knew it. To the major in cause of Luke's death, who is sister of the cook and ex fiance, well, fiance of a Liz. He said if he wanted my silence, it would cost. Do you have any idea what it could do to my livelihood, my name? If it got out that I had paid the so-called security that did that. I have every idea, monsieur. You hired a militia to take action against your own workers. You deserve whatever name is chosen for being so morally bereft in your decision making. I didn't know that was what he was going to do. You must believe me. He's shitting it. I have to believe nothing but the truth. And the truth, monsieur, is that it is not only the Major that has the blood of those men on his hands. That is all. Yeah, prick. See you later. Double check this area before I bugger off. Yeah, again, apology to being quiet. I'm just trying to figure out what to deal with. Detective. All right, so then surely is there something? Could that be it? Because that this isn't the second time someone asked for her help. But that the pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Achievement! Yeah, my girl may know more than just getting on. Get an inside link with the staff of the house. I found no clear evidence evident of the guests working together at any capacity. Become clear in the common desk connects to the staff. Could there be something more to their relationship? Yeah. I don't talk to her. Is there something you need, Detective? Tell me about your true relationship with the common test. She helped me at the shelter and with this job. That I am already aware of. What I am not is what else she tasked you with. Pardon, Detective? I know that your position as a servant in this house is not your only job. What did Comtesse de Vos ask you to do while in this house? She said I had to do what she asked, or I would be back on the street. I didn't want to do it. If anyone found out, I would be the prime suspect. Oh, shit. Madame Vanna's boss would have been aware of young Inge's past. He worried they would accuse her. I would ask if I must have related to her past life yes, as a thief. Mademoiselle. Act on 
Got to be the key. Got to be the key. What do you mean, not the key? What do you mean, not the fucking key? Come, my little grey cells. Oh, what about that then? Some would say a lucky guess. In a minute of a work in a house, and not wholly honest. Is there something you need? What would it comment that Arthur is still from the house? Nothing. She said I was to take nothing. If it was not something she wished you to take, what was it? She wanted me to find out information about the family and Monsieur Hagen. Why did she request that? At first I didn't know, but when I heard about Mademoiselle Angeline being blackmailed, and then the Major, I knew she had used what I found. That must have pissed you on Mr. Sterling's involvement with the Major's death were incorrect, and his key was lost. Well, not lost, but stolen. I knew Monsieur Archie had a key, and it would be easy to get it from me. You knew that the Major asked Monsieur Sterling to access the safe from time to time, and if anything was ever discovered missing, he would surely take the blame. I never took anything. I only told the Countess what I had found. And that was? About Monsieur Egan and the Madame's relationship. And Angeline. I'm sure the Countess was pleased to hear such valuable information. She said I had done a good job, but I needed proof. That's why I went back and got the letters last night. Oh, shit. So a young end that beat Madame Van der to the safe last night. But why would they be left in such a precarious fashion? When I returned to the study this morning, the letter remained out and the safe opened. I fetched the letters again and took them to the contest last night. But she shouted at me and said what a stupid girl I was. You were only doing as she requested. She said it was too dangerous for her to have them with you around. That's when I returned them to the study. I thought I heard someone on the stairs, so I just threw them back. It was dark as I dared not turn the light on. Someone would have seen it. Ron slot the key in a lock in the dark and no easy feat. I would explain the scratches on the safe. If Madame Banner's pop was the only one to try to receive the letter a minute earlier, you would have crossed path with Inge. Achievement! Yeah. Merci, mademoiselle. I cannot see the logic in this. I cannot see the logic in this. Perhaps a second look at the e Oh. Magnifique. I thought it was responsible for Archibald to lose the key, but now disappearance makes sense. And then that can go there. Is there something? No. Nope. Okay, there. Another success. I wonder how many secrets the house holds for him to find. The pieces of the puzzle. Uh, if there's somewhere in the house where a secret lied, it's surely be found in the hidden room. My suspicion the conversation connection would injure correct. She was using a young girl to find out anything and everything she could for the family, while the commentator need not even get her hands dirty. Yo, the commentator said a bitch. Is there something you need? What else have you relayed to the commentator? That's all. I swear. I heard Monsieur Archie and Monsieur Felix talking about a storeroom. But I haven't found it. Is the Countess aware of this room? I told her it was somewhere in the house, but I didn't know where. She wasn't happy with me that I hadn't found it yet. I believe Young in knew the location of the secret store. She would have been forthcoming with it. It may be naive on my part, but she already incriminated herself and nothing else to lose. I suppose that I will lose my position at the house now. That is not my decision to make. But when the whole truth is revealed, it will not be the pawns the law looks to convict. We shall be coming for the queen. Yeah, it's queen. Do I go to the storeroom? No, nope. all right. Do I do this? All right. Mm. So.
Come, my little grey cells, we must think. Magnifique. I'm going to make a sheltered home, do dirty work, find doubt, and remember the social elite. Boom. All right. So, it, my, and when I'm going to fuck my going in. There it is. And that would link to that. Some would say a lucky guess. Let's just calculate whether live secret what motive could possibly could possibly justify those deviant actions. Finally, I am master blackmailer. Mademoiselle Angeline and other resistance of such letters may no longer live in fear. Common death, divorce shall pay for her crimes. I've I've got the blackmailer. We did it. I did it, guys. I did it. I got the blackmailer. I saw the black Maller. Ah, because I the greatest detective of all time. The AC show. Ah. Ah, let's talk to her. Mademoiselle, merci for coming. Have you had a breakthrough, detective? Yes. I have. Finally, I have the news you have awaited. Please, detective, don't hold me in suspense. I finally uncovered the identity of the one holding the van der Bosch name to ransom. Oh my, I feel faint at the thoughts of knowing who could have done this to us. It is said to keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. It is Countess de Vos that is behind the letters. I don't believe it. What about the Major's letter? Not only his, but a letter to Monsieur da Silva. She was blackmailing him as well. Detective. I just... I just don't know what to say. Take a moment, mademoiselle. It is a lot of information to take in. I just don't understand why she would do such a cruel thing. What do you know of young Inch past? She has never been particularly forthcoming with it. Only that she was homeless for some time and that she was at the woman's shelter before here. And it is there that the Countess abused her power and manipulated her to uncover secrets of the family. All this time she has been working for Margot, doing her dirty work? I am afraid so, mademoiselle. Mademoiselle was in a state of shock to learn such a close friend of the family had betrayed them in such a cruel way. It must be devastating. Is Maman aware? You are the first I have told, mademoiselle. Next will be the authorities. I'm afraid that we'll have to wait. Uh, so to play, so, so to play, Mademoiselle. I must go through the correct channels. And we will. I want to see her punished to the fullest extent of the law. But we cannot telephone anyone as the lines are still down. Monsieur Archibald informed me earlier. I had hoped they would be working again. Last night's snow must have caused more damage than expected. Last night? They have been done all weekend, Detective. Oh, what? Detective? Are you okay? I've been lied to again. How could I have been such a fool? I saw Mr. Sterling talking on the telephone, but I heard no ring. Detective Quarrel? It was a lie. I've seen it acted out of my benefit to throw me off the scent. If I believed the Major was still alive at the time, I had no reason to investigate anyone or anyone or anyone where about beforehand. Anyone with being Mr. Sterling and his staff. Would you like me to fetch you a glass of water, Detective? My apologies, mademoiselle. I was taken by surprise for a moment, but I have regained my composure. A glass of water is not required. Achievement! Who did AC go? I don't know. I don't know. Apparently some little ginger prick with a pink hat and, you know, Merci. he talks a lot of rubbish. He got energy some days, but other days he's really tired. And, you know, he just, he just won't shut up. He just, he just carries on talking over and over and over. The family. And he does this stupid catchphrase when he say achievement. I mean, who does that? Who in the right mind had a catchphrase? Ugh. Disgusting human being. My patient had grown thin. The guest and the staff of the house, I think it acceptable to lie to my face. When questioned, I shocked my investigation, but no more. We shall say Mr. Sterling and his staff 
bear under some pressure. Um, I've been lied to you for the last time. My suspicion literally led me to the guess. Now they are firmly placed on the star. Mr. Sterling, Mademoiselle Rohana cannot hide behind her lies any longer. Oh, uh, I told you. I told you. I fucking said at the start, like, two chapters ago. Why am I... So hmm. I should... Mate. I'm good at this. Oh, you little pricks. Can you look at anything around here? Wait, all right. Ah, oh, look like Elizabeth on the way to see me. But at such a late hour. Mademoiselle, what a pleasure to see you. Detective, I... It is a rather late hour to be wandering the halls. Oh, yes. Of course. I do not feel myself, Detective. If that is the case, you should be resting. Uh, allow me to help. No, no, that's quite all right. I will see to my duties and return to bed. Hmm. Lizzie! Excuse me, Elizabeth. Lady Van Den Bosch has been waiting for some time now. Oh, yes. Sorry. Detective Poirot was just... I'll see to the detective. You just head on up. Off you go. Good night, detective. Bonne nuit, mademoiselle. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, certainly not herself. I thought the death of the major brought up uncomfortable memories of her beloved Luke. But maybe something else. I'm sorry about her, Detective. As you can see, she is still not back to her usual bubbly self. This weekend seems to have taken quite a toll on her. She'll be right as rain in a couple of days. Now, what can I help you with? As if by magic you appeared when needed. I would like to speak with you and the remaining staff, if you could gather them in the staff pantry. At this hour, Detective, is that really necessary? Yes. I shall be the one that determines what is and what is not necessary, and this is very much the former. As you wish, Detective. I'll see if Inge is finished preparing for breakfast. And Mademoiselle Rihanna? Yes, of course. I'll fetch her from the kitchen. Elizabeth may be some time mm. the lady of the house. Perhaps you'd like to start with us? Very well. I shall speak with Mademoiselle Elizabeth when her duties are complete. While I am gathering the staff, Mr. Beckles is in the library. If you wish to join him, I could bring you both a nightcap. I wish to keep a clear head, but there is something I wish to discuss with Monsieur Beckers. There's an opportunity to confront Monsieur Beckers about his dealing, or lack thereof with Monsieur de Silva, without being disturbed. Ah, uh, I feel like we're getting closer now. We're doing it, guys. We're going to solve a murder. We're going to solve the sort of the murder. Out of curiosity. What would you know? Chapter 7, 8, 9. Visit all location. Duh, duh, duh. Oh, I didn't do that. Fuck. Oh. Uh. Okay, well I might I might not get all achievements, but I'll get most of them. Monsieur Beckhouse, it is rather late. The other guests have already retired to their rooms. I didn't even see the time. It's easy to lose oneself in a library this impressive. That is something we can agree on, monsieur. I suppose I should be heading. A moment, monsieur. There are some matters that we must discuss. Oh, what is it, detective? I did not realize your relationship with Mademoiselle Conrad was so business and orientated. Sure oriented. Her proposal to make you somewhat of a star, a figurehead for the working man. What would you call that? 
There was certainly no talk of making me a star. That is not the type of man I am. She wanted to write a piece on my work with the Union. And I was happy to oblige. Hmm. Mr. Beckard always appeared to have the work and intention in the forefront of the decision. But perhaps the thought of being remembered for something great was too much for him to pass up. I was wondering, did your speech go the way you expected? My speech? I'm not sure what speech. You may save your false ramblings for your next audience. I am aware you spoke with the Major yesterday. Whoever told you that has it wrong, Detective. Please, Monsieur. The truth. Okay, fine. Yes, the Major and I spoke, but it was not for long. What was the manner of your conversation? From what I understand, it was not a light-hearted chat. I was trying to convince him to speak with Ernesto. It's time we brought the strikes to an end. Oh, really? And that was best approached by a shouting match? He wouldn't listen to a word I said. I spent so long preparing how I was going to convince him, but men like him are only swayed by one thing. Money. Monsieur Becker is not wrong. Had he tried to grease the major palm, perhaps he would have been more successful. It is said that money is the root of all evil, but it can also be a rather powerful bargaining chip. Well, he was bargaining with people's lives. If he had acted sooner, none of those men, my men, would have to die. The major oversaw security at the factory. Could he have done with more to stop the strike turning violent? Turning violent? I understand Monsieur De Silva had prepared the deal. A deal? It was an insult. And that is why you did not sign it? I didn't sign it because the workers deserve so much more. Not his pathetic attempts to get them back to work. Did you think there was a chance for a better deal to be made? I know there was. He's a pompous swine that cares for only himself and filling his pockets. I am sure I've heard the description of Michel de Silva before, or at least something familiar. Look on Jacqueline Infant over Hugo. Mademoiselle Conrad can be Here we go. Dancing, can she not? Remember, he's a wimp. She has certainly taken several wealthy business partners by surprise with her knowledge and prowess. She knows how to use her womanly powers to get what she wants. But she did not surprise or use you? Me? Use me? Don't be ridiculous, detective. There were no games played at my expense. Michelle Becker was quite aware of words and a fan of his own voice. Perhaps I should allow him to opportunity to speak and open up without too much interruption and forcefulness. Even though she was able to convince you didn't you not sign a deal, I'm sure uh, many have been persuaded by her feminine proneness. Perhaps some, but I'm not so easily manipulated. Ah, oh, fuck that. Oh, hang on. Uh, you were you? You claimed that you were a few minutes of silver deal and it was not adequate for your men. That one. Excuse me? You had the opportunity to end the strikes before the tension escalated, let alone blood being spilt. But you chose not to. How dare you? Everything I have done has been for those men. I fucked it. For their rights and their fair treatment. Uh, are you prepared to take responsibility of the action or lack thereof? Your job is to support the worker, but nothing you have done got them any closer result you promised. I may not be perfect, but I have done everything I can. Your efforts fell short in every respect. You claim to be the voice of the people, but you care about no one's voice or benefits but your own. It's not as easy as oh. signing a piece of paper, detective. It is a heavy weight to bear on one's shoulders. I consulted with others. You yourself spoke of Mademoiselle Conrad's cunning in business. And I told you, I was not one of her targets. Tell me then, what was it she reminded you of? The acclaimed man of the people you will be known as if you push the factory owners for more? Oh shit. It wasn't like that at all. Told you, the wimp. From where I am standing, it was she that was manipulating the terms of the deal, and you in the process. You were merely her pawn. I think you have let your imagination run away with ah, you, fuck. Detective. I fucked it. She merely offered some advice. What kind of union leader and fighter for equality and fairness would I be if I just did what someone told me to do? Fucked it. <laughs> Mademoiselle Conrad. She All right. But she... Uh, that one then. No, she just reminded me of what I was fighting for. 
Excuse me. You had the oh, and then this one? Everything that has happened no. is my doing. You yourself spoke of Mademoiselle Conrad's cunning in business. And I told you. Tell I me fucked it again. From where I, you were mere, I think. Take three. But she. Excuse you had. Oh, I met your. It's not as easy as just sign. You yourself spoke. And I told. Tell me, it wasn't from where you were merely have. I think you. Okay, have... okay, okay. Here we go. You claim that your fume is your deal, deal and it was not adequate to your men. And I stand by that. It was an insult. A rather bold move to make such a decision on your own. <laughs> uh, shit. That one. Everything that Fuck's sake. You, it, you, okay. Ah, oh, fuck. I thought I failed it. My bad. Achievement. You with those men's lives for fame. And you lost. My bad. I didn't mean to skip that much. I thought I failed it again. So that why I hit A so many times. I don't mind choosing, but you are from a large family. What does that have to do with anything? I have often wondered about the competition siblings face in a large family. When you're young, it is the best feeling to know you have family that will stand by you without even being asked. It is not until everyone starts carving their own path that you realize you're walking your solo and those that were beside you are now miles away. My older brothers were the athletes of the family. They both played soccer and were the infatuation of every teenage girl. I'm sure you have seen the type. Oui, monsieur, but I can assure you that was not I. Then there was me, quiet, timid, a shadow of the Baker brothers. My voice and very presence was forgotten and ignored. Nothing I could say or do would ever reach the bar they had set. But I always knew I was destined for great things. Years passed, and now that I no longer stood in the colossal ombre of my brothers, I could become my own man. When the position of union leader was posted, it was my chance to finally be heard. You hear politicians speak of the little or the common men? Well, that was me. And I knew what we wanted and what we needed. When I spoke, others listened. I held their gaze with a sense of pride, a sense that what I was doing was for the greater good. It was supposed to be my crowning achievement, lead the men to victory over the money-grabbing oppressors. But instead, all I did was lead them to their deaths. Monsieur, it was not at your hands that these men died. The blame cannot lie solely on your shoulders. Those responsible will be punished for their crimes. That you must trust. Monsieur Becker's story one with the fighting to have one voice heard, be it single or one of the masses. I'm afraid he may remember for what he did, but not in the way he hoped so. Speak for him. Ah, let's go talk to the staff. Time to leave. Get out of here. I don't know what to do. Uh, while speaking to Monsieur Becker was not the reason for me being up this hour, he was able to fill in some of the blank regarding the major, but not, but not getting, not, but not in getting any closer to discovering his killer. Perhaps the staff living court will. What Minecraft? What do you put? Among Us, maybe? Ah, I'm just throwing out suggestions. They might not be helpful. Alright, they go talk to the kitchen staff. Huh. Alright, maybe not. Let's go to the kitchen. Okay, where are we going then? Where the fuck are we going then? No, okay, where are the staff's quarters? Is it this room down here? This is the only room I haven't been in. Boom. Yeah, where you play Fall Guys? 
quite entertaining, isn't it? A decent support of log. I hope just hope the stuff also make sure you use them in the weather. I don't want to play it though. Oh, okay. They're a few days old and do not hold a candle to what been transpired here this weekend. I'm glad I'm, I'm just a guesser on how. Not sure how I sleep in such a contraption. A war medal that I presume must belong to the Major. A rather luxurious jacket with an initial red F8. Feed it Hagelin. Are these scruffy boots in his head well? Why would he be left here though? The item that I found are most intriguing and require an explanation that I believe only staff can give. I shall meet with them in the pantry. Detective. What can we do for you? You can help me by telling the truth, and in the process, help yourselves. Sorry, Detective. It's a bit late in the night for riddles. How is that a riddle? Tell the truth. That That's not a riddle. It is no riddle, Monsieur. If I do not receive the truth, you shall all be charged as accessories to murder. Boom. Detective, I think maybe you have been locked in this house for too long. We have already... You have told me a version. And now I require honesty. Oh, here we go. Ah, I'm sure I'll be back. We're getting ever so close to the end of this game, I think. Mademoiselle, I shall be as quick and precise with my questioning as possible. Okay. What do you need? My condolences to your brother's passing. Merci. He was a good man, taken too early. And one man would turn the one hour. Forgive me, mademoiselle, for not extending them earlier, but I was not aware of your relationship. And one hour would turn the one day. He was my only brother, and he died doing what he believed was right. If I ever get my hands on who took him from me. I understand why she's so angry for her brother to be taken from the world at such a young age and in such a violent manner. Violence cannot be met with violence, but I'm sure Mademoiselle feel the same. I'm not sure Mademoiselle feel the same. Tell me about your brother's involvement in the riots at the factory. You say the riots, but it was the strike he was part of. They started the riots, not the workers. By they, you are referring to the security forces. They were brought in to keep the peace. That's what I said, Max. Man, you're... you're... Listen, I am leader. Security, huh? They were brought in to make an example of them. It was all peaceful until they arrived. Why would they need to make an example? So that the workers would stop rallying. No one is going to go on strike if they think they'll get killed. The security you talk of were armed and ready. The workers were pigs to the slaughter. What chance did they have? It obvious Mademoiselle is still upset about her brother's death, and rightly so. The events when Mademoiselle described, I cannot comprehend how the security forces were able to get away with such despicable acts of violence. Pardonnez moi, um, pardonnez moi, Mademoiselle. I know we've spoken about this, but you took ice to the major, correct? Yes. This was before or after Archibald took him a bottle of whiskey. Before? You are sure? It may have been after. The whiskey is kept in the cellar with all the alcohol. It is. Then you must have noticed him going into the cellar and returning with a bottle through the pantry, no? Yes, I suppose I did. It must have been before then. There's only one question on Mama's out to doubt her own story. Well, I still cannot see why the need to, for the lies. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. I decided to make my car look better to see. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Mademoiselle, I shall keep my questions brief. I don't know what else I can tell you. You have been honest with me so far. All I request is that you continue to do so. 
Oui, yeah, in Inge is the best because she's just been honest this entire time. Like, you know. I'm already aware man was that that's probably gonna change. I probably I probably spoke too soon. Uh I'm already aware man was our involvement with the blackmail, but I'm not sure if she also connected with Major's murder. Tell me what happened before you found a major in his study. It was frantic in the pantry. We were working hard to make sure everything was up to scratch. Go on. Then Liz burst in, asking for Maman Ray's help. Her help with what, exactly? I don't know. She took Liz to one side, and I was needed in the salon. We spoke just after that in the pantry. You did not question what she needed help with? I was too busy. I love Liz, but she sheds a tear at almost everything these days. Although, I have never seen her look so pale. And with our Elizabeth still looked pale from when I saw her earlier. Understand the amount of work going to keeping the health of sides running. And Madame cannot expect the staff to work their real. Right, Mademoiselle Rohanna can clear up the reasoning for Elizabeth panic. Merci. I shall return if I have any further questions. Monsieur Sterling, is there anything you would like to add to your story? I'm not sure what you think I have done, Detective. Let us not string out this charade any longer. The telephone call the Major received. From his associate. I've already told you, Detective. I don't know who it was. Do not worry yourself on such details now. I suppose they were lucky to have called when they did. Otherwise, they may not have gotten through at all with the telephone lines being down as of yesterday. Aye, Detective. Lucky, I guess. Mr. Sterling, no fool. I believe you're aware that suspect. I'm suspect of him or something. Perhaps some carefully worded question. All that needed him to slip up. Did I see the uh, the major alive when you brought him the bottle of whiskey in his study? Correct. Whiskey. You took a bottle of whiskey to the major. You spoke with Monsieur Demir en route. Aye, of course. It was a bottle he picked up from his last visit to Scotland. Rather smoky number from the Highlands. He was saving it for a worthy occasion. Drowning his sorrows must have been fitting enough. At first, he did not remember the bottle at all, and then by magic, he recalled the exact details. Or was it the one from the West Coast? You will have to excuse my memory, Detective. It's not what it used to be. Can you explain why a medal belonged to the Major or amongst your belongings? Oh, you found it. Thank you, Detective. I've been looking everywhere for it. It was on the bed. If I had lost a war medal, I would not stop until I found it. It's not what you think. I was... Exploiting a dead man's military achievements for your own personal gain? Nothing of the sort. He asked me to clean them up. I must have dropped it into my pocket when I was putting them back. An honest mistake. Never have I heard such a pathetic excuse to explain a stolen item in one possession. I would expect a better life from an infant. I cannot claim to be an expert, but what I presume a medal like that would be quite some value. I wouldn't know. Probably. Your father was in the military for many years. That is what you told me. He was. And your family still keep his medals? They were sold. And why was that, monsieur? Is my family on trial now, detective? Only you, monsieur. And I repeat my question. Oh, he repeating the question. Because we needed money. Voila. Monsieur Sterling was well aware of the medal value when it found its way in his belongings. You claim the Major asked you to clean his medal for display purposes. No. He keeps them safe with some of his old military documentation. Is that a typical job for the head butler? He trusts me to do a good job. I told him I used to clean my hmm. house, so he asked me to do the same. And where does he keep these items? In the storage room. I know where everything is, so it's just easier if I fetch them for him as and when he needs them. I do not recall seeing any military memorabilia or keepsake when I was in the storage room. Could there be another storage room he speaks of? Are you happy here at the Van der Bosch house? It's certainly better than my last. Oh, hold up. You are paid a fitting wage for the work that is asked of you? 
I'm sure the lady of the house would not want me discussing it. But I... I should not complain. Where did he work before, though? That is not the most convincing answer, monsieur. Between you and I, we all work very hard here. And it would be nice if we were rewarded for it. But thing is, though, we still haven't... We, we spoke on this earlier about Florette, and we still haven't seen or heard from her yet. And we're coming to the end. It seems Mr. Sterling is trying to convince me that he has himself that his light fingered actions are justifiable due to the petite praise he received for his honest words. Please don't go anywhere. If I require more information, I shall call on you again. Like we saw her in the prologue, we spoke about her, but we haven't seen her since. Go on, detective. Tell me about Elizabeth yesterday. What is there to say? Being locked away in the pantry. I don't see her for most of the day. That may be, but she came looking for your help before dinner was served, did she not? She wasn't feeling well, that's all. Mm. And she came to you. I told you, we are a family here. The girls come to Mama Reh if they have a problem, and I fix it. Yeah, but you're more than family, you're nearly sister-in-law. When I saw her earlier, I must admit she was not looking herself. Perhaps I should check on her. No, just leave the poor girl. She'll be fine after another bowl of my homemade soup. She just needs her rest. I'm sure Mama Zara Hunter, loving mother, figured to start while away from their families. But eagerness to keep me from seeing Mama Zara Elizabeth again did not sit comfortably. Merci, Mademoiselle. That is all for now. All right, let's solve this shit. All right, before I solve anything, my conclusion is, I believe Elizabeth Stutt did it. She barely seen, she looked pale. Her ex-fiance dead Luke because of the Major's security force that give multiple reasons why she came into Tiriana to clear things up and that is the way I'm going with it if I am wrong then I will hang my hat in shame maybe not this hat I like this hat but I will hang my hat in shame if I am wrong but I believe I am right I must take a All right, now I've got to fucking put now it, I, I need to believe I'm right, but I also need to, you know, get this right. Okay. Order and method. That. Bruh. Bruh. Oh. Oh. Another success. The theory that the Major had been killed during dinner was nothing but a ruse. Why had to start covering for the real time of death? Ugh. <sighs> <sighs> What a revelation. Donkey so sad had that oh fight fight fight. The major would not have such a left to fine coat in the staff area. Someone must have worn it. More importantly, however, who wore the major clothes? What this? I should not be surprised by my I can either then forget something important from only one day before. Alright, we're getting there. We're getting there. So what about that? I must no. On thought.
Mm. Too easy. Oh, they're fighting. They're fighting each other. You love it. This will not get me. I must take a different. Hmm. What that? I must act on thought. Okay, how the fuck am I fucking this up? This is rigged. <laughs> He's fuming. In the He's fuming. May I talk to anyone again? If you insist. Born. Oh, it's a key. Oh, shit. Nest. Go on, detective. Okay, this is taking the piss down. Alright. Hmm. Is there something? Uh, Things ah. are beginning to become clearer. Are you, are you cheating? Are you? What's going on in your game? I'm interested. That's why I keep looking over. <laughs> ah, I missed what you said. Hang on. Uh, I should have known that first plant belonged a member of some staff, but who? With someone. Some lying. A, lucky guess. a staff member dressed in the major clothes and took a position out in the snow uh, for the guests to see. Why would they do this? Start covering the real time of death. Ah, there we go. I went around and played the part. Wow. But until they became complacent, why did the staff build they fabricate the stories? No, wait a minute. Archibald and Rihanna, yep. Into that. I should not be surprised by my... Um, I had to relay the story back to them both. I can't, obviously can't trust a word they said. Why the stuff hiding the truth? Because they're... Another success. It, a revelation I not expected. The staff were involved in the murder. Uh, shock. Whilst young and guilty of her own crime associated with blackmail, it was just Sterling and Mr. Mamadale Rihanna that came an integral part of cover up and skewing the truth how the major were killed. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best detective in the world. The staff were already suspicious to begin with, but they confirmed their involvement. Are, are all the staff members involved? I am close to revealing the truth about the major murder, but I must understand the roles that each and every person involved play before the final puzzle is solved. Okay. But this? Come, my no. Ah! That! Things are beginning to become... I cannot imagine the pain they have felt among Luke. Their memory would live on in their hearts. 
Okay. Order and method. What a revelation. I live at Logan Power and the other member of staff were busy in their duty. You must have found a body. But did she play a part in murder? But that This will not no. get me any closer to my goal. Come here, hold up. She looked and white coming downstairs. She found the body. He helped her. Magnifique. Although the duty of primary folk in the kitchen, I don't recall seeing her. Uh, the uh, pantry, I don't recall seeing her. I cannot see no. Rihanna once was seen after Elizabeth found the corp. That when it made the phone call. Archibald actions here coming to play the cover for member staff, but who? I must take a different approach if I am to uncover the truth. Maybe that? Order and method. No. Nope. That come, my little grey cells. Uh, what's he doing now? Gotta go do my injection. Uh, no wise man, no wise. Hope I see you soon. Hope your injections go alright. I'll be up back when you can shoot some settings. Uh, no, because she was in the pantry. Maybe this. Things are beginning to. I'm confident in the part to cover up. That would clearly been focused on other staff. In this. Is there something? No. I must act nope. on fact right. and fact, not on. Think, think, think. One second. Wait a minute. Once seen after. <gasps> what a revelation. Person that made your Rihanna role in the plan, but why was it necessary? I'm not sure yet. Why did she feel the need to come for Elizabeth? She found the body. This will not no. Me any because she. I cannot see the logic. No. Come, my little grey cells. We. She come downstairs. Won't be that, but why would she be covering for herself? She found the body. Go out there, Rihanna, go outside to be the Jack Major. Pretend to be her, she found the body. To make it look like she was dead after. Phone call. Alright, covering for a member of staff. I should not be surprised. The stay phone call Archibald with Simon. He went great length to protect Elizabeth. But why did he feel need to cover for Elizabeth? While young Ian was guilty of her own crime to associate with blackmail, it missed your stolen man was Ariana had been an integral part of covering the obscuring the truth had the major were killed. I'm a genius! Um I now have all the pieces of the puzzle, I must return to the room and place them together until the result. It's time for my little ginger Sal to go to work. I am close to uncovering the truth. All right.
So the Y. Okay, let me. Uh, let me that's right. No, no, not be that. Not be that. Stuff went wrong. So come for a little bit. Come, that's it. I'm right. I'm right. I fucking called it. Magnifique. How could I allow it to slip from my finger? Right through my grasp. Elizabeth is the murderer. I'm the best. What? I solved it before Pryro. I cannot believe I did not see this. Biden by my own trust. I look back at now, the clues were there, staring me in the face. I felt my time chasing connection between the guests, their motive and agenda were more than enough to raise suspicion. But while I'm distracted by them, I failed to note in one absent member of the household. What I cannot grasp is why. I promised myself after that fateful day in the capital, I will not let judgmental steer my adrift, me adrift. But once again, it left, I left looking for a fool. There's nothing more can be done right tonight. Achievement! But at least I can rest my head preparation to confront it in uh, Madame, Mademoiselle Elizabeth in the morning. Oh! The truth. What in the world? An elephant escaped and made it way to the second floor. The sound don't come directly above me. That's the storage room. <gasps> We're working, boys. We're working. We're working, people. We're working. Oh, I now I know who did the murder. But what about the secrets in the house? There is yet more to be discovered. Oh, hello. Uh, they just zoom in. Oh, uh, we, we like we like having it out. We can see more. Why would Mister Stalin be clattering around here in the dead of night? Archibald up in the middle of the night making some mountain noise. I must find the extent of his behaviour. Yeah, Archie, mate, what are you doing, buddy? What are you, what are you doing up here, eh? Eh? Mr. Stalling. Oh, Detective, I was just... Please, I eagerly await <laughs> to hear what reason you have for being in the storage room at this hour. A butler's job is never... I am no fool, Monsieur. You have spun enough stories this weekend. Honestly, Detective, you don't trust anyone. And with good reason. My patient all but run out. What are you doing in here? I've been thinking about my time with the family. I often think on fond memories, but it does not take <laughs> me to a storage room in the middle of the night. <laughs> there are many memories held within these walls. I just wanted to see them again. Mr. Stone, it sounds though you planned on leaving the house. It sounds though you moving furniture in here. I didn't realize the noise I was making. Obviously. Were you preoccupied looking for another of the Major's medals? Oh, sick burn. Of course not. I already explained. No, Monsieur. You attempted to dupe me again into believing one of your stories. Please, Detective. I know you know how it ended up in my possession. I was just trying to get some extra money together to send home. I can't lose this job. If Lady Van Den Bosch found out, Theft of a medal would be the very least of your problems. You have done nothing but deceive and abuse your position in this house. Deceive? I'm sorry that I lied to you about the medal. Anyone can find him, Mr. Sterling still remains steadfast and refused to acknowledge what he had done. Would you care to explain the fake telephone call? It was purely for my benefit, no? Why would I fake a telephone call? The same reason that Mademoiselle Rayana dressed in the Major's jacket in the snow. To allow not only the guests, but me, to believe the Major was still alive. I didn't kill him, Detective. I know, Monsieur. 
But I also know that you helped the one that did to cover their tracks. It wasn't like that. We were just trying to help. She had no part in it. Both you and Mama Dariana have risked your freedom to help Elizabeth. You never let on. How long have you known it was her? Monsieur, I am Detective Hercule Poirot. I only show my hand when I deem it You will be taking her away then. She will stand trial for what she has done. But you don't know the full story. She is just a servant in this house. If she is arrested, that will be the end for her. If Mademoiselle was only protecting herself, as you both have claimed, she will surely be found innocent. You still not explain what you're doing in here. The Major's military storage box. The one that stored his medals. Amongst other things, yes. And those other things are? I had to protect her. If you found it when searching the study, you would have carted her off then and there. What? Whatever it is you have hidden, it will not remain that way for much longer. Mr. Stone, obviously hiding something. I should perhaps conduct my own search for it instead of relying on cryptic messages. I need a moment. <laughs> oh, bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Oh, bloody hell. Oh. Ah. One of many sink carving from around the house. Abandon the box. Why are there sink carving here? Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. The attack carving may relate to a door in the room that would explain Archibald presence. And then this, I guess. Another success. Well, that would fucking obvious. I never doubted myself. Archibald might have hidden light in the secret room. I assume this is stitched within it within here somewhere. Are they going behind? The, it going behind the fucking yeah? Of course so. You can clearly see it. It's a big line. Ah, hidden room. It seemed to be more secret in it. How to discover? Achievement. Yeah. A prestigious looking knife, like belonging to the major. A letter. The last one testament of the last vice count. Achievement! It seemed he truly loved Angeline. Last one testament declaration. I declare that I, with Vice Count Edward Vanderbosch, am a sound mind. The last book expresses my wish without undue influence. Unjurious. Article 1. In the event of my death, I hereby appoint my wife, Cassandra Vanderbosch, as the executor of the Vanderbosch estate, and leave the remaining wealth held in the Vanderbosch name to my only daughter. Angeline van der Bosch. Uh, any outstanding debt, expense of my last illness, future expenses, funeral expenses, and an administration cost are to be paid to the van der Bosch account at the National Bank of Belgium. You, my daughter Angeline, you're the apple of my eye and the bright star in the sky. Never allow your light to fade for even, for even a moment. You, my wife and Sandra, thank you for the many joyous years we have laughed, we have loved, we have brought the most precious gift into the world together. You say that, mate. Uh, I trust that you'll protect her and prepare her own future will for opportunity and hope. I count out Edward and Vanderbosch. Monsieur Victor Rejude, Rejude Petit, this is it. Uh, but I'll go quickly, you're not an ejection, just putting a sense on my arm. No way, no worries, no way. Do what you gotta do. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop you from being healthy. Meant to lighter. Isn't it looking lighter? Looks like fortunately been through a war. Come my little grace out, I believe we do know something about this mystery. A major military service box. It contained letters and keepsakes. Some would 
say a lucky get. The murder weapon we found. Elizabeth must have used this in the study. Achievement! Yeah. Ah! I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. A lighter must belong to the major. The army symbol can confirm this, but I don't really have. But don't I already have this in my possession? We do. Things are beginning to become. The light I found in the military, but clearly the major, meaning the other one is not. Fuck okay. yeah! Yo, Archie, you got some explaining to. No, use lying no shit, Sherlock. Uh, when I expected the grey yesterday, I found a lighter, soon belonging to the Major. He always had his regiment lighter that he received in the war on his person. And yet, it was not his regiment emblem that was engraved on it. My father's. It must have fallen out of my pocket. You still have it, Detective. A lot of shit falls out your pocket. Jesus Christ. Monsieur. You have stashed evidence, manipulated a crime scene, obscured my investigation, and yet it is a lighter that you worry about most? If it is my path to end up behind bars for what I have done, so be it. It is Elizabeth that you cannot allow to be locked up without the truth being told. I have heard how you fought for that young maid before. Florette, is it? I only ask that you do the same for Elizabeth. Although the case is different greatly in severity, I can envision simulating how Ramrose and Elizabeth will be treated by those in the position of authority or social standing, even before she trialed. It is my oath and officer and law that uphold justice and fairness. Ramrose must be given a chance to prove her innocent before the court, as any other suspect, the absent murder weapon. You found it. Well, no, sh it was lying there. Even the secret area that has been created here is not concealed enough to stop Detective Hercule Poirot. And the fact it was lying there on a desk with blood on it. I couldn't just leave it at the scene for you to find. The Major was killed by his own knife. The knife that protected his life during the war would eventually be the one that ended it. It was in his holster when he attacked her. He had hold of her arm. What else was she meant to use to get him off of her? Can't imagine the Major would have given him a knife up so easily. He must have been in close proximity to reach it. But they did attack her as she claimed. She didn't plan any of it, Detective. She was only defending herself. That is what Mademoiselle told you? She did. And I believe her. You think you knew the Major, but you had no idea. He was a monster and had more secrets than all of us combined. That may be true, but that does not excuse what she has done. Put yourself in her shoes for a minute. If a man like that had attacked me the way he did Lizzie, I would have done a lot worse to him. And without Elizabeth told Michelle Sterling a version of the event that suggests she was attacked by the Major. I struggle to believe that she would just make such a story up. Then also did not believe she could do such a thing and commit murder. I need a moment. All right, I'm quickly just gonna pop to Lou. We are getting so close to the end. We will finish this tonight, but I just need to go to Lou before we carry on. So enjoy the ad, and I'll be right back. Happy birthday. All right, let's solve this murder. Oh, just to make sure that's all fine. Yep, yep, yep. Everything okay? Cool, we're good. 
All right. So, Archie's suspicious behavior. Okay. Wait a minute. Archibald was in the garden night of the murder. He was been out of the weather to hide to collect something. Yeah, surely. Magnifique. Yeah, well, the only thing I found Archibald lighter. He must have collected something now. But what did Archibald collect from the garden? <sighs> oh! That's how he would have collected it. He probably threw it outside. Success. I shall drop the murder weapon in from the window, collected it, and then hid it in the secret room. I'm I'm so smart. I'm so smart. There is no use like It was you I saw in the garden that night. When you asked me yesterday about seeing someone out there, I thought the game was up. That does not explain what you were doing out there. When Lizzie took me to the study, the knife was still in the Major's chest, and I knew I had to get rid of it. I dropped it out of the window, knowing no one would be going outside. It was fine for the time being, but I couldn't risk it being found when the snow melted. So you collected it under the cover of darkness, and stowed it away in here where you thought no one would find it. After your questioning in the pantry, I knew you were on to something, and I couldn't leave it here. And where did you plan on moving it to? Honestly, I don't know. Achievement! There's not item in hiding to save Elizabeth. He must have truly wanted to protect her from the law. Fuck yeah. There is no use. Why what? Why I would risk everything? Yeah, I want to know why. Exactement. Because she is family. If you were in that position, you would do the same. What do you mean family? I can assure you, monsieur, that I would not. Then perhaps that says something about you, detective. I would do anything for her. For any of my staff. Even if it means crossing the boundaries of the law. Without question. The lamp that makes your sterling would go to protect someone he considered family ad admirable. But when the lamp break the law, very law that are in place to protect the innocent, they cannot be ignored. I ask that once your morning duties for the lady of the house are complete, Mademoiselle Rihanna and yourself wait in the staff quarters. I detective. But please, you have to help Lizzie. It was all an accident. She doesn't deserve to spend the rest of her days behind bars because of that man. I mean, to be fair, the Major, what a dick. He had a dick when we first met him. He had a dick now and he had a dick way dead. If she is put behind bars, it is because that is what the courts have decided upon. Detective, you can't be so cruel. It is not cruelty, monsieur. It is the law. Yeah, it's the law. I've got that law, Riz. After all these further revelations, my mind is busy. I'd miss your, I'd miss your good chocolate shop. I take all the pieces of the puzzle to deduce my Elizabeth, why Elizabeth killed with the major. Now I must allow the little grey sour to put them together. I divine a document in the hidden room, thinking to start to fall in the place of why Elizabeth may have killed him. Okay. It all starts. It all got to start with her financial state. But if he won, he won't receive any pension. So, what a revelation! A major financial struggle must have left him 
need a source of income. Uh, who could the major have turned to in his time of need? And then he'll be in blackmailed. He'll be in blackmailed because he killed prisoners of war. Because, but because he didn't have any money, he couldn't pay the ransom. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. The information would destroy his reputation if unveiled. I talking about a blackmail. We then bring in Ernesto. So that links to that, that links to that, that links to that, that because he got paid. But then he got a job because of Ernesto, so that served him that. Another success. I never doubted myself. The major needed a job to go ahead. It was the only way to guarantee money in his pocket. Max is hacking. What's Max, what's Max doing? Uh, what could he do to ensure the job was complete? Yeah, the job was done. Security attacked first. Some would say a lucky guess. The security payment the major must have ordered the attack with a strike. What would the consequence of the major order in the attack? Luke dying. What a revelation! The major action unfortunately led to the death of Luke. I will agree. Why? Who would have been the most affected by this? Elizabeth. Magnifique. Elizabeth probably lost more than anyone else involved. She may have sought her revenge. Elizabeth doesn't seem like the vengeful type, but all signs point to a secret revenge for Love Luke. I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm I'm the current man without Elizabeth. My at my best, my little grace out, most alert at time to at least try and rest. Uh, I have no time to dwell in lack of sleep. I must confront Mademoiselle Elizabeth and hopefully finally know the truth of what took place. Detective Poirot, I'm glad you're awake. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. It has certainly not been a night of peaceful sleep. There is some. Ah, oh, fuck that! I did it again. I'm not sure, I can take any more surprises like last night. I'm afraid this may be the most upsetting of them all. You have found Felix's killer, haven't you? Yeah, what about Florette? Nothing been said about her since. I have. And the guilty party will certainly come as a shock. I have no great pallor that the Tyler knew this, mademoiselle. Detective, please. It was Mademoiselle Elizabeth that was behind the Major's death. You must be mistaken. Elizabeth would not, could not do such a thing. I assure you I am not. It is something I spent much of last night deliberating. When you spoke of the telephone lines being out of order, it made me question the conversation I thought I had heard Monsieur Sterling make with the Major before connecting the call to him. But it hasn't been working all weekend. Exactement, Mademoiselle. That is when I knew I had once again been lied to. On the way of speaking to Monsieur, uh, Sterling and Mademoiselle Vienna met Mademoiselle Elizabeth. She was meant to be resting in the staff quarters. She has not been well. I am afraid that was yet another lie, orchestrated to keep her from incriminating herself. Why would you think that, Detective? I only managed a few words with her before we were quite abruptly interrupted by Monsieur Sterling. I must admit, he has a habit of speaking over the other staff. It was much more than merely disturbing our conversation. It was done with the intention to prevent Mademoiselle saying something that she should not. So, Elizabeth killed Felix, and then Archibald helped her cover it up? In its simplest form, oui. I have heard it directly from the horse's mouth. You have spoken with Elizabeth already? Did she admit to it? Not Elizabeth. But Monsieur Stanley. Were you not woken last night by the tremendous amount of noise coming from the storage room? I wasn't. W what were you doing in there, Detective? It was Monsieur Sterling that I found in there. I was taken by some surprise to hear anyone awake at that hour. 
What on earth was he doing? He claimed he was merely reminiscing of his time with the family. You don't believe him? It did not take long for me to uncover the truth of why he was there and the location of the Major's murder weapon. Ooh, do you know about the hidden area within the storage room? Hidden area? Yeah, hidden area. You know, big, big green wall. A room that held all of the Major's secrets. I had no idea. Did you discover the reason for his blackmail? Yep. I did. Were you aware he was dishonorably discharged from the army? Dishonorably? What does that mean? Are you joking me? Are you fucking kidding me? I will not hide the truth from Mademoiselle. I will try and be a delicate apostle with the nude about the major prior action. I'm sure you're aware of Mr. Zachariah's trouble he faced from his time in the war. Yes, Gideon told me about the conversation you had. It is really quite upsetting. Zachariah was adamant of the Major's cruelty during the war, but the extent was not known until now. He killed a number of prisoners, men that were friends of Zachariah. Surely not. He would not do such a thing. They must have been trying to escape. Oh my god, love, you're stupid as fuck. I am afraid not. He's so in denial. They were in fact unarmed. Oh, detective. Alright, that was a weird oh. She went, oh, detective. Oh. It is the reason he was discharged, <laughs> denied his military pension, and I believe the reason he fled England. He had been such an important part of my life for so long, but I feel like I hardly knew him. Oh, trust me, love. There are more. Uh, Mr. Sterling was adamant on Mademoiselle Elizabeth Innocence. Innocence? You said it was she that killed him. It was her hand that held the knife, but he was quite insistent it happened in self-defense. In all of the years I have known her, she has barely even raised her voice. I cannot believe she would do something like that out of malice. The whole truth cannot be known until Mademoiselle Elizabeth has told her story. I allow my perception of a character to conceal any part of her involvement. You think I'm not the only one. Time had come to confront Mademoiselle Elizabeth. Will you allow me to be present? I think that is an excellent idea. I hope your presence will calm her and will perhaps allow her to speak more freely. Please, detective. I know she has done a terrible thing, but I beg of you to give her the time to explain herself. What, like Florette? I will offer Mademoiselle Elizabeth the fair trial that she deserves, as I would with any suspect. Thank you, Detective Poirot. Would you bring Mademoiselle Elizabeth to the study where we will not be disturbed? Of course. I'll find her immediately. Yeah, take her to the scene of the crime. Why not? That's a good on your prior. I would be I'd believe that Mitchell Sterling already told me about the event that occurred between Mademoiselle Elizabeth and the Major. I do not believe she would have do if do what she did if he had not attacked her and pushed her to the point where she feared for her life. I might listen to her story, the truth, and only then can punishment be determined. Here we go. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, merci for joining us. Miss Angeline said you requested to see me urgently. We have some serious matters to discuss, and I would like to waste no further time. Oh, yes, Detective. How are you feeling, Mademoiselle? Still not quite myself. I was surprised when Monsieur Sterling hurried you to assist Madame Vandenbosch last night. I should not have avoided my duties for so long. The house does not stop because I'm feeling a little under the weather. That is true. But you cannot be expected to complete all your tasks if you are not in the right frame of mind. Honestly, Detective, it was best for me to not sit and wallow anymore. My investigation taken me many path uh, this weekend. Have you been able to uncover who the blackmailer is? The blackmailer's identity has been established and they will pay the price for their crimes. Wonderful news, Detective. You can put it all behind you now. You must be thrilled. I would not say thrilled, knowing that such a close friend has betrayed us. Mademoiselle is correct. What I have learned over this weekend is that people are not always as they appear. While they may give an impression of being a friend or ally, they can in fact be something completely different. 
And um, what of the mages killer? Well, mademoiselle, that is why I have asked you here now. Uh, I understand Luke would not involve only sight, but would on the front line. Yes, that is where he spent his last moments. Standing shoulder to shoulder with his fellow workers. The resulting riots were a terrible tragedy. One that I hope we will not have to see or experience again. Something that could have been avoided had the Major and his team done what was required of them. Nobody deserved to die that day. Not my Luke. I posed a question to all of my guests what their thought and the Major were. Now I send that question to you. I'm not quite sure what you want me to say, Detective. Your honest opinion is all I ask. And, s'il te plaît, do not hold back. No one else felt it necessary. We only spoke when there was something in the house to be done. We did not speak of interests or pastimes. You knew of his work with Monsieur de Silva? I only know what is required of me to know, and that is very little. But you were aware of his work as security at Monsieur de Silva's factory. I was. The factory your beloved Luke worked at. Oh, here we go. Before he was cruelly taken from this world. Yes, Detective. Do you blame the Major for his death? Detective, what kind of question is that? It is a straightforward one. I... he... Mademoiselle, if there is something you wish to tell me, now is that time. I'm sorry, Detective, I just don't know how to answer it. Oh, answer it. Let us consider what we know of the Major. He fronted the militia that attacked the world. Here we go. Strike. You were aware of this? I... You finally had someone to blame for Luke's death. Someone conveniently located in the same house, alone in his study. No, Detective. It wasn't like that. Tell me what happened with the Major on the evening of his death. I was only in here trying to prove what I heard Mr. Beckers say. I was going to report him, I swear. Miss Angeline, you believe me, don't you? I want to. I am still trying to understand it all myself. Why don't you start from the beginning? I was delivering Miss Angeline's dress to her room when I heard Mr. Becker's arguing with the Major in his study. They were ever so loud. I thought the whole house would have been listening to what they were saying. Mr. Becker's was talking about the factory strikes and how it was the Major's fault. He told him that if he didn't own up to his crimes, he would go to the newspapers. I cannot imagine the Major would have taken kindly to Monsieur Becker's threat. He didn't. He called him some rather uncouth names before Mr. Becker's left and went downstairs. I made sure to keep out of sight. Oh, here we go. After the altercation between the Major and Master Gideon, you went to speak with him outside, and I thought I could look around his study without anyone knowing. I had to know for sure. If it was true, he deserved to be held accountable. And did you find the proof you are looking for? I found a payment from Mr. De Silva, but there was nothing incriminating about that. I was so nervous. I felt like my heart was beating out of my chest. And then you saw the blackmail note. I recognized the writing on the envelope. I couldn't believe it. How could he do such a thing to Angeline? To the family that had taken him in? Common sense would determine the Major was another victim of the blackmailer. If I'd have used common sense, I wouldn't have been snooping around alone in his study in the first place. I heard the footsteps in the hall, and before I could move, the Major was standing in front of me, demanding to know why I was going through his belongings without permission. I tried to come up with an excuse, but nothing came out, and when he saw the letter in my hand, it was like Dr. Jekyll turning into Mr. Hyde. I tried to move around him towards the door, but he hurled something towards me, and it crashed against the wall. That would explain the damage to the wall. Ah! I froze. I have never been so scared in all my life. I thought he was going to kill me there and then. And you thought you would beat him to it? Oh, Detective, you make it sound as though I had it all planned. He lunged forward and grabbed me by the arm. I tried to push him away, but he was too strong. His grip just got tighter and tighter. If only you had seen the look in his eyes, I dared not even scream. I saw the sheath on his belt. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want to hurt him, but he wouldn't let go of me. 
So you took your opportunity to put an end to it all. I just wanted to get him off me. I didn't want to hurt him. I reached for it and I jabbed it at him. His grip instantly loosened and I ran straight out the door and didn't look back. You did not even look to see what state you had left him in? She had just been attacked, detective. Oui, please. Continue. I ran down to the pantry looking for Rahana. She took one look at me and knew something was wrong. I explained to her what had happened and she went to find Archie. She said he would know what to do. We went back to the study and he was still lying there, motionless. Ooh. Archie said that no one would believe me. That if someone like me killed someone like him, I would be sent straight to the gallows. He left the letter so you would find it. He said that if people knew what the Major was really like, then they wouldn't care what happened to him. So I am to believe that it was Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana that cleaned the scene and orchestrated a plan that included a fake telephone call and dressing as the Major so that he may be seen. You had nothing to do with that. I swear I had no idea that is what they had done. Archie just told me to stay out of sight. I am no master criminal. Hmm. Then Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana will be charged for obstruction of justice and impeding my investigation. Please, detective. They were only trying to help me. If they wished to help you, they should have brought all of this to my attention immediately instead of committing more illegal acts. Ah, uh, good on Pro. Surely you haven't forgotten what happened with Florette. She was only accused of stealing a bracelet. I killed oh, the man. We'll bring this up again. It is a day I have not forgotten, mademoiselle. Even for a moment. Without your help, I don't stand a chance. Please, Detective Huero, you are the only one that can help me. Oh, Elizabeth, why didn't you come to me? I didn't think you would believe me. I felt so guilty. And when it was announced yesterday that he was a victim of the blackmailer, I wanted to tell you everything. I came to find you last night, Detective, but Archie stopped me. I'm sorry. Come on, let's look right out. Let's solve this mystery. Yeah, okay. I cannot see the logic in. All right, so what the fuck am I doing then? I must act on thought and fact. All right. Ah. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I leave the story confirmed Marjorie claim the major death would result in defensive strike. Finally, I've solved the case of the major murder. I must admit, I take no joy in declaring Mademoiselle Elizabeth to kill her, and I wish she had never been put in such a position at all. Achievement! Yeah! Oh, yes, Detective. I don't know where it is. If you have been honest with me until now, I ask that you continue. I'm sorry, I really don't know. Archie dropped it out of the study window and he said he would deal with it. I couldn't bear to touch the thing. I have the knife in my possession. I believe that from Mademoiselle reaction. You don't know what became of it. You're unaware of the effort that Mr. Sterling and Mademoiselle Rihanna went to mask what she had done. Mr. Sterling were not lying when he said he would do anything for her. Mercy, Mademoiselle. Sit to play wait in my room. Myself. I didn't want to hurt him. He just wouldn't let me go. All right. Oui, mademoiselle. 
I know. Mademoiselle tells quite the harrowing story. I cannot imagine the Major acting in such a way. But Elizabeth could not make up such a story. What do you mean you couldn't imagine he murdered someone? He murdered someone. After learning what I have about the Major's character this weekend, I would not question the lengths she would go to in order to keep his Thank you, Pororo. I know that you share a close bond with Mademoiselle Elizabeth, but you cannot allow your personal feelings to taint your belief of what took place. She has committed a terrible crime, but she will live with that for the rest of her life. She is not a cold-blooded killer. If what she says of the Major's attack is true, she acted in self-defense. And in the laws, oh, the crime has not been committed. I will do everything I can to make sure her story is heard and a fair trial is conducted. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. Ah, uh, yes, because you got a hydrate when you solve a murder case. Hmm. I believe the version of event that Mademoiselle Elizabeth have confessed are true. The Major having fallen into a fit of rage at the prospect of his sordid secret coming to light. He attacked the young Mademoiselle and drove her to do what she had to do to protect herself. She put herself in a dangerous position, but there was a small part of me that commended duty. She felt to find justice of her beloved and the other worker that lost her life at the Major's order. If the telephone now working, I'm calling the finding. The remaining snow may still be tired sometime before they arrive. It is time I address the house. Are you sure? What will you say? What if they do not listen? I can assure you, they will. Elizabeth was right, though. She's just a servant. What if they. Mademoiselle, when Detective Poirot speaks, oh. you will listen. Riz. Would you ask the guests to convene in the library? Detective Riz. Of course. And what of the staff? I have told Monsieur Sterling to remain in the staff quarters with the others. When the authorities arrive, they shall be dealt with. You have been of great help to me throughout my investigation. And now that it is over, I have one final request. You only need to ask. While I am speaking with the guests in the library, would you watch over Mademoiselle Elizabeth in my room? You don't think she will try and escape, do you? In her position, I do not know what she might try, but I trust with you there, any potential ideas of such a thing will be squashed. Achievement! Let's go, chapter 9. We are coming to the end. I think the ending is just... It's a cutscene? I oh, know. Cutscene? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. The Denomont. Yeah. Detective, you have spent more time making us sit and wait for you than anything else. Madame Van den Bosch, if you think I have spent my time focused on anything besides uncovering the Major's killer, you are sorely mistaken. I'm sure you will be eager to share your findings with us then. All in good time, Madame. Firstly, to understand the truth of what has occurred this weekend, one must know the timeline of events that not only preceded the Major's death, but succeeded. We are all well aware of what happened before, Detective. You can save your breath. You are only aware of what the guilty parties wanted you to believe. But now I shall apprise you to the true events. The reason for us all being here, you know. The altercation between Monsieur Demir and the Major, you know. The body of Monsieur Hagen was found while we were all sat enjoying a most delicious meal. That you also know. But what was kept from us all was that his body lay on the study floor for far longer than was thought. It was that servant. She found him. S'il te plaît, monsieur. It was indeed young Inga that found the Major's body lying lifeless in the study. So it was her. Monsieur, I will not allow for any further interruptions. Hmm. I return to the Major's body. If we are to believe the scene that we were presented with, the Major must have been killed during the first course of our meal, a meal that none of you left, even for a I moment. think people like the uwu. Speaking in the evening, you all confirmed one another's alibis, and although there was doubt in the validity of some, 
I confirmed that they were indeed all true. What I could not understand was how a man came to be found dead and every guest accounted for at the time of death. That is until I questioned the latter. Monsieur Beckers, I shall now allow you to speak. You saw the Major smoking a cigar in the snow. Is that true? It is. False. You saw what you were meant to see. Someone in the Major's coat, standing outside, giving the illusion that the Major was still very much alive. Monsieur da Silva, on the afternoon of the Major's death, do you recall hearing a telephone ring? Now that you mention it, I have not heard a single ring all weekend. Correct. The telephone lines have been down for the duration of our stay. Meaning the telephone call that was received and promptly directed to the Major's study was yet another act of trickery and deceit. But it did not end there. When I entered the study for the first time, it was obvious someone had already been there and falsified the scene to stage a burglary and clear away important evidence, including the murder weapon. What followed was an investigation that had already been hindered. But even those lengths were not enough to derail me for long. I think we have all had enough of your self-praise, detective. Perhaps you would like to tell us who killed him now? Madame, as I'm sure you would expect, it is not as simple as that. What many of you do not know is the discussion that was had between the Major and Monsieur Beckers earlier that day. What has that got to do with anything? I told you I didn't kill him! That I know to be true. What you do not know is that it was not only his ears that heard your spoken words. Ooh. I hope you are not implying I had something to do with it. No, madame. There was another. Mademoiselle Elizabeth. You are all aware that the Major was hired by Monsieur de Silva to front the security during the workers' strikes. What very few of you know is that it was the Major's order that instigated the vicious attacks on those unarmed men and resulted in numerous deaths, including Mademoiselle Elizabeth's fiancé, Luc. <gasps> Monsieur Beckers confronted the Major, declaring that he was to hand himself in. That is what Mademoiselle Elizabeth overheard. Now, knowing the truth, she waited until the Major was away from his study. After he stepped outside, following the confrontation with Monsieur Demir's fist, it looked to be the perfect opportunity. Or so she thought. The Major returned and found her looking for the proof she required to hand him over to the authorities. If the maid bumped him off, why hasn't she been arrested? The events that followed in the study are not those of a cold-blooded murder but one of a young girl that had no other option but to protect her own life. Sounds to me, detective, like you have taken a shine to this young girl and would rather protest her innocence than arrest her for murder, the crime she has committed. Jeez, this is gonna make for a juicy story. Mademoiselle, I ask you this. You have seen the Major's anger before, oui? What if I have? How do you think he would have reacted if someone was to find proof that he had committed a terrible act and that, if made public, would surely result in his incarceration? Ooh. Exactement. It is quite the story you have told, Detective. But all I have heard is that Elizabeth overheard a conversation blaming the Major for her fiancé's death, and she murdered him in revenge. A servant! Killing a man that is as revered as he was. She will face the noose. I am not denying that a man has lost his life. But it is not the crime of murder that you all believe. While the Major did not deserve to die in such a way, it was his actions towards Mademoiselle Elizabeth that drove her to defend herself in any way she could. Mademoiselle Elizabeth will be punished. But we will let the law decide the severity of her punishment. She has played you like a fiddle, detective. Hey, this bitch. Acting the innocent victim. Hey, this bitch. She will be arrested and hanged for her crime, like every other cold-blooded killer. Uh, here, here. Give her what she deserves. 
The girl has got to pay for what she's done. Oh, I hate this fucking group. Uh, I could have been clear on what occurred and made it started. They've all forgotten their own perceptions and major. The terrible crime he had committed and what he had done to them all in one way or another. I cannot allow Madame Elizabeth to be negatively influ influenced by those in the house. I might help them to see how their past actions have led to see unfortunate circumstances and loss of life. Perhaps I should remind them all their participation and not only of the workers' strike but the resulting riot. Those of you that are calling oh. for the hanging of Mademoiselle Elizabeth, have you forgotten the roles you played? Your actions have been far from innocent. Oh, here we go. Look, Detective, I see where you are going with this, but it's not going to work. So maybe the strikes were down to De Silva and Beckers. But don't try and drag me into their mistakes. Mademoiselle Conrad. If you are so confident of your innocence, perhaps we should begin with you. Convince a man with our comrade to admit on her involvement would not so be easy feat. Be a strong mind to collect a question in the past. Perhaps a more aggressive approach. Uh is in order. You're at the top of your field now, but tell me, why would you enter the world of journalism? To uncover truths. To show the world what it is really like out there. Why then do you go to such lengths to concoct and fabricate stories? Listen, Poirot, I am not going to stand here and be accused of something like that. You know how damaging that can be to one's reputation. You knew the situation surrounding the strikes and only sought to swell the anger in people and create further chaos. Mademoiselle. You so often have something to say. Now is not the time for silence. I got her. You really are delusional. Maybe you should just keep your theories and claims to yourself. Uh, you have it for your own agenda, not contingent of repercussions. I do not. Uh, I did not know any field that sacrificed life. Uh, no, this one. You obviously have no idea what goes on in my world. I would say stick to honest police work, but it seems that is not in your field either. This bitch! You cannot honestly believe what you've done acceptable. You allow other to fool while you walk proudly across their backs. Look, it's... Mademoiselle, I do not have time for your excuses. Do you wish to state your direct involvement or should I? It's not... I yeah! Should... Okay, fine. Yes, the story was going nowhere. There was a deal on the table and it was going to be done and dusted. Everything you said is true. I wanted the story. The scoop that would have blown the others out of the water. I never wanted anyone to get hurt. But I can see what I did wasn't right. I didn't think you had this side in you. I can see now why Angeline asked for you personally. You're not like other cops. It's clear it's the law and doing the right thing through and through with you. If you say it was self-defense, I believe you. We can't just forget what that girl has done. It's not Jackie's fault or any of ours. She decided to do what she did. Monsieur Beckers, you are the last Ooh, here we go. I expected to defend Mademoiselle Conrad. We talked only last night, and correct me if I am wrong, but you have already declared the role you played. To me, at least. Yes, we talked. It's just not fair of you to attack Jackie like that, putting words in her mouth until she succumbs to your plan. I know enough of Monsieur Becker to know that pushing him would not yield the results. Playing the role of an ally may be the best way to approach him. Uh, you did not consider how strike would turn violent, endangering your men. Uh, even as a leader of your union, you were swayed by one no part. That one? This is ridiculous. Oh, fuck. It was a peaceful strike. We only wanted what was deserved. Surely you do not think I sought to worsen the situation? Monsieur Becker's. You have taken the words from my mouth. Jackie was documenting everything to do with the strikes. She wanted our story to be heard and wanted to know how I was handling the negotiations. And they were handled by yourself? Naturally. If I cannot handle simple negotiations, I am not fit to be in the... Oh, I got him. Members of our Wade Infinite manipulated your every decision. You take prick pride in your work. Are you proud of the decision you made during the strikes? I was only pushing for what my men deserved. Fucking got him. They needed. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, detective. Surely you must know that. Nothing is ever simple, detective. I'm sure you understand that better than anyone. 
Uh, you have fought for those who do not have the voice. Surely this will not allow another one. Uh, surely will not allow another one to be lost in the wind of social discrimination. Mr. Becker, you will continue the pageant trail long enough. It's time to be true. Now that one. You're right, detective. I have tried so hard to deny my part, but I know only too well that my decisions led to the death of those men. I know I cannot excuse what I've done. I just want you all to know that I am not a hateful or malicious man. I only wanted to prove that I was the right man. I have lived in other shadows for so long. I thought that I would be able to finally step into the light and be the one that everyone remembered, not forgot. Monsieur De Silva offered me a deal and I turned it down. I thought I was doing right by the workers. It was only myself I was thinking about. What more proof do you need? He said it himself. I made a generous offer to reach a resolution, and he turned his nose up at it. It was not that simple, though. Oui, an offer was made. But Monsieur Beckers and the workers would never have been forced into that position had their working conditions been satisfactory to begin with. This is oh, here we go. Do you plan on blaming everyone for doing their jobs? I suppose it makes you feel better about yourself, doesn't oh, let's it? Let's break this man down again. Although Monsieur De Silva eventually opened up, he was defensive when we discussed the matter of blackmail and about a private conversation behind closed doors. I can't imagine he'd be forthcoming in front of the other guests. You're going to need some convincing to admit his fault again. Uh, if you're simply doing your job and treating your men fairly, there would not be a show to talk about. No, no that one. It may be oh, a big fuck. deal to you. But I am used to workers not being happy with something. And most of the time, that unhappiness is directed at me. When you're in charge of your own factory, you'll understand. I handle the situation the best I could. If you think otherwise, maybe you have proved us all right that you aren't the great detective you claim to be. Uh, anything I claim to be is supposed to be facts and truth. Uh, the side of the high one secret a powerful force. I would how wonder how easily yours is broken. The way they're playing non black man that accused the same. They're fuck it proud. They're fucking go. I'm the next target, am I? You are certainly not making any friends here, detective. We can all see right through you. Whatever you have to say, we have known each other for years, and it will take more me, than a I'm young, cocksure detective to waver their support of me. Monsieur Da Silva, you seem to have forgotten our previous conversations. I recall them just fine, thank you. A police officer trying to manipulate facts to fit his own agenda. Shocking. I've just fucked this, haven't I? Uh, can I have abuse against your staff and hire on a Monsieur? Those are the fact that you twisted to my agenda. And you're not. You're ready to remember Kindle the fire that started the riot. Fuck it. Think this is the first time blame has fallen at my feet. Although I don't think I have seen someone try so hard before to even convince themselves of what they are saying. Have you not learnt enough already from having your factories closed? If you have any hope to return to normality, you must admit your faults and accept the repercussions. Apparently anyone can become a detective. Ah, oh, fuck that. I really through order and order <laughs> there's no order in beating down who you consider suspects until they have no other option but to admit something guilty or not monsieur da silva you have stood steadfast and your opinion on your involvement has not wavered detective you would do well not to anger my friends it was not my intention I only want those responsible to be held accountable for their actions. The Major's death does not fall on one person alone. Does your position on Mademoiselle Elizabeth's guilt remain the same? Even after all uh, so I fucked. Okay, so I got two. Was still right. murdered. Self-defense or not, she chose to hide what she had done because she knew what she had done was wrong. And she will be punished for it. It was not choice to hide anything, madame. If in her position, I ask, what would you have done? The Major has already furiously thrown an object at you, barely missing your head, 
and now has hold of your arm. I wouldn't have driven a knife into him, that I can tell you for sure. She is no fool. She intended to kill, not to defend. I never had a bolt with main it was much greater challenge, but I method to approach her right before. I'm to sway her to see him Mademoiselle Elizabeth had no other option, but persuaded that it was a major action that drove her to do what she did. Uh speaking with the guest this weekend, not the first time. That one. It's quite presumptuous of you to assume violence is in his nature. Putting my own feelings towards the Major aside, he was not an honourable man, at least at some time in his life. He must have been for you to allow him in your house for so many years. So, even you confirm he had a history of aggression. The uh, Major dishonourably discharged from the British Army, are you aware why? He played the role of care and friend very well, but this will. Uh... You have no idea. He was there for us when we needed him. You were there for him when he needed free room and board. That is not the case, oh, and oh, you know it. I got her. His actions are unforgivable, and should not be defended by anyone. You judge him so harshly, but I return the question. What would you have done in his position? He had made mistakes. I will not deny that. In those moments when a decision had to be made, it fell to him and he did what he saw fit. Uh, Making a pause in your once is a mistake. Making it twice is a choice. And what of the mistreatment that you would see in Major? You cannot justify that. Make all the attack on unarmed worker. Surely you cannot condone that. Fuck yeah. Simply, madame. I ask that you consider everything you know of the Major carefully. He was not always like that. The man right, so I got three. would never have done what he has. I cannot allow another innocent person to be punished for his... Oh my god, a swader. ...barbarous behaviour. You have seen the Major act in a similar manner as I described. Before, Achievement! What was the outcome then? You have convinced me that I am wrong in both my opinion on Elizabeth's punishment and in the friendships I keep. Is that not enough for you? Achievement! Not when a potential crime has been committed, and I fear an innocent party may have been punished for it. He was just a boy. I told him to stop, but he was like a wild animal. The confrontation with Mademoiselle Elizabeth was not the first time he has come close to killing another. It was following the officer's ball. A young man, no older than 16, stopped us on the street, begging for some change. Felix pushed him away, but he was persistent. He only wanted a few coins. Like a flash, Felix snapped and wouldn't let go of him. He would not stop punching him. I, I have never seen anything so brutal. But he was never charged for the attack. Felix called the captain at the station and said that the boy had tried to rob him and he was merely defending himself. Fuck the Major. The boy was thrown behind bars without a second thought. It was a full week before the bruises on Felix's knuckles finally faded. And even after witnessing such a brutal assault, you still support him. You still believe that he had not attacked Elizabeth. The days following, he showed no signs of remorse, no apology to him or to me. I blamed it on the amount he had had to drink. But when you began talking about him finding Elizabeth in his study, I somehow knew it had happened again. Had you been open about the Major's temper, this could all have been avoided. When you tell the courts the truth, Mademoiselle Elizabeth's self-defense plea cannot be ignored. 
Just when I thought I could not see a more spineless move. Oh, you're off by one to talk, bitch. Excuse me. You allowed a bully and thug to remain in your house and endanger your family. I'm sorry, Margot, but I am struggling to understand why you have involved yourself in this affair. I'm surprised you can hear me way up there on that high horse of yours. How dare you speak to me in that way? Who I decide to keep in my house oh, is kicking off. decision and no one else's. I can see that. Murderers, thieves and extortionists are all acceptable, it seems. Blackmailers. Countess, I have talked at length of the Major's death. But not the reason for my invitation in the first place. When I last gathered you all together, I spoke of a blackmail ring that was rife in the area, and then of the letter that the Major had received. Mademoiselle Angeline requested my help personally after she received such a letter threatening her family name. She felt I was the only one that could uncover the truth. And uncover the truth, I have. Get on with it, detective! Who dared try and extort my family and then have the gall to allow me to welcome them into my home? If it was not for the honesty of a young servant, I would perhaps still be looking for the cup. For goodness sake, it was me. Wow, she fucking shot up a minute. Margo, how could you? While it looked as though the Countess was helping the young women at the shelter, she was, in fact, only finding them positions of employment in wealthy homes to gather information on them and learn secrets that she would ultimately be able to use against them. Monsieur da Silva fell victim to her network of moles and was in turn blackmailed. It was quite the prosperous setup you had, knowing that they would not be prepared to lose their social standing if a secret was to find its way from where it had been hidden for so long. That cannot be true, Margo. How could you do such a cruel thing? That is rich, coming from you. Oh, shut up, Pervia. Yeah. You are one of my oldest friends. High and mighty, Madame Vandenbosch. You think you can do what you wish, when you wish it, and there will be no repercussions. You are as bad as all of them. If I do not get a straight answer out of you, I will march you to the police station myself. Oh, bitch. It's snowing. I'm surprised it took the Major this long to start living with you. He must have been on the edge for some time. How dare you speak to me? Oh, fuck it. off. Both of you, Jesus In Christ. In my own home. All right, slap him. A home you share with the father of your daughter for so many years, and she still remains none the wiser. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. You have no right to... Uh oh. Maman. Angeline. Have you heard what she has admitted to? Uh oh. She has been trying to make herself. Is what she says true? Felix, he was my father. That is the secret that the letter was talking about, isn't it? You told me that we had nothing to hide. Detective Poirot, were you aware of this? Oui, mademoiselle, but it was not my place to repeat. I don't understand. What about father? Your mama betrayed the love of a good, honest man and played away behind his back and then kept it hidden for all these years like a lady of the night with her client list. Don't you say no more. Angeline, I... Did Felix know? This is not an appropriate conversation. He knew, dear girl. He knew the whole time. It is only dear Edwin that was blind to their deceit. You will not talk of him like that. You will not talk of him at all. If I don't, who will? You never deserved him. You don't even deserve the memory of him. Countess. There is something that you still have not explained. What more is there for her to say? How long were you in love with the Viscount for? Oh, shit. Margot? Is that true? 
We were destined to be together. And then you turned up. And I was all but forgotten about. But you were nothing more than friends. And you made sure of that, didn't you? From the day you arrived, it was all about what you wanted and what you had to do to get it. You didn't consider Edwin at all. He was just a purse to you. I loved my husband, and I miss him every day. Loved him enough to stray? Both of you, no more. Please, Angel, let me explain. Maman, I do not wish to hear anything else from you. Not even your own daughter wants to hear your lies anymore. Cassandra Vandenbosch, all alone. How dare you! Uh oh. Borrow just done. Borrow's out. What about Elizabeth? Or Angelina might look after her. Prora don't give a shit. Prora's out. Well, I feel a sense of satisfaction and pride in solving both cases. There is still a part of me that is reluctant to revel in triumph. I am content with the unmasking of Countess de Vos as the blackmailer and knowing that she will pay for her crimes. But it is the justice for Mademoiselle Elizabeth that worries me. She will stand in a court of law. And I can only hope that they can see she acted in self-defense. I must trust that our legal system and justice will prevail, and a fair sentencing will be given. In protecting her own life, she took the life of another. Perhaps the guilt she must live with is a greater punishment than any sentence she can receive. Achievement! What about Florette? We never heard from him again. Countess oh. de Vos was taken from Nemozine House in cuffs and placed under arrest. Although she initially tried to plead her innocence, Inga, along with a number of other girls that the Countess had found employment for, came forward and made full statements. Oh, peak for her. She was charged with five counts of blackmail and extortion and sent to a house of corrections where she will have a new life to become accustomed to. See that bitch? Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana were also reprimanded for their participation. While they may not be facing time in prison, tampering with a crime scene and obstruction of a police investigation are certainly not something that houses and new employers will look positively on. Mademoiselle Angeline finally became Madame Demir. And together they took up residence in England, where Monsieur Demir continues to support and fight for fairness and equality in London. Woo! I am happy to say that we have remained in contact, and Madame Demir has become a regular correspondent of mine. And the latest joyous news is that they are expecting a child of their own. Woo! Madame Van den Bosch showed compassion that I had not seen in her before. She stood in court and gave a truthful and genuine character reference of Elizabeth as well as describing the Major and the atrocious crimes he had committed. After Madame Vandenbosch's secret was revealed to the world, her position in the social hierarchy was no more, disappearing in a moment. While she still resides in Belgium, I believe she has had to adapt to a far more modest way of life. A humbling experience for her, I am sure. Following her actions in the courtroom, Angeline believed that her maman still had a place in her life. Although they are on different sides of La Manche, they remain in contact. Mademoiselle Conrad left Nemozine House the same way she entered, confident in herself and audacious in her opinions. Her report of the Major's murder at the house and the surrounding blackmails became one of the most talked about stories of the year. While there were certain details of her own involvement that did not make it to print, she was really quite complimentary about the detective at the heart of the case. Monsieur de Silva tried to continue in his position as factory owner and business entrepreneur, but after his accounts and business dealings were investigated following the details of his blackmail being made public in Mademoiselle Conrad's article, his illustrious business empire began to crumble and is now facing an international corporate investigation. Monsieur Beckers stepped down from his position as union leader, accepting that he was no longer fit to represent the workforce that in his words, he had let down on a scale of unmeasurable proportion. Although he is no longer the voice of the workers, 
he continues to support them from behind the scenes. Mushu Zakaria and his brother made amends and returned Aww. to his family home and after sobering up, he was able to find the help that he required. I understand that he is now helping fellow soldiers with similar conditions. Oh, good on him. And Mademoiselle Elizabeth, she stood before a court and while the proceedings were deemed controversial, the charges against her were dropped and the reasoning of self-defense was accepted by the presiding judge. Yeah! And Van den Bosch's testimony, along with Mademoiselle Angeline's declaration of her good character, was enough to show that it was not in Elizabeth's nature to act in such a violent way. The abundance of evidence against the Major, of his violent and cruel nature, including his appalling acts during the strikes and the war, was more than enough to prove that Mademoiselle Elizabeth had no other option in that situation but to defend herself in any way that she could. With the new arrival of Madame and Monsieur Demir's child next year, they have agreed to give Elizabeth the opportunity to return home to England and take up a position in their home as nanny. Good. Good. And the Major's still a dick. The death of Elizabeth's beloved Luke has been at the center of everything. Had those in positions to help not acted with only themselves in mind, perhaps he would still be alive today and the Major would have paid the price for his own crimes in the eyes of the law, not at the blade of a knife. The blood of Major Felix Egan will remain on Elizabeth's hands. A stain that wherever she is and whatever she may do, she will never be able to wash clean. However, it will remain as a reminder to not only her, but all of us, of what we as human beings are capable of to protect ourselves. We all have something that may be considered shameful or sinful, and it is how we deal with it that shows our true character. Those involved in the riots, the workers' deaths, and the Major's killing believe themselves to be untouchable. Whether it was from their social standing or their confidence in themselves, they learned that everyone is accountable for their actions. There is no exemption because of the suit you wear or the money in your bank account. There is no price to a man's life. It cannot be bought or traded or discarded. No man is better than another, including Detective Hercule Poirot. We did it! We solved the murder! I told you I'd do it. I told you. And the fact that I solved the murder before Proro means I'm better than Pro. What? GG! I am a genius. Ah, uh, because when the uh, murder comes around, my little ginger cells, they excel to deduction level. Mm -hmm. That was a good game. I, I enjoyed that. That that was, that was probably one game that I have brought that I really enjoyed this year. Yeah, that was. I, I thought that was quite fun. It was different. It was. It made me use my brain sufficiently. Uh, we had a, I had a good time. I hope everyone else had a good time also. Where, wherever you're watching it, whether it now or on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this game because I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was. It, it, it was it was good it was very good obviously i wouldn't need 100 percent it and at the end of this credits i don't know, fuck it we do skip the credits fuck it you know what the credits ah yeah so uh that will be the end of the stream hope you'll probably first case it let's how many achievements did i get in one playthrough brah i'm four achievements away Wow, I got 42 out of 46. Are you kidding me? Uh, I have to play this again to get the rest of the achievement. Four achievement. We need 100% of it first time. That's mad. That is crazy. That probably... De wow, okay, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. And I'll be happy to play this again. But tomorrow, I'll be back around 4 o'clock again. With our next game. 
which is a, another mystery game. I'm 100% of this, and I know who the murderer is already because I've seen the TV program and the movie, and I played the game. But yeah, we shall be doing the Hercule Poirot, the ABC murders. Uh, the alphabet have killed people, so we must solve why the alphabet did it. Uh, we shall bring the letters of the law to justice. Uh, but yeah, so I'll be back with that tomorrow around 4 p.m. It was me. It was me, Austin. It was me. I did it. I did it for the rock. I did it. I did it for the rock. Uh, but yeah, that will be me done tonight. Uh, thank you everyone that popped in this evening. It it it, it been fun. Uh, apologies for the frame rate issue in the beginning, but I'm glad we didn't have any other problems after that. After I pulled out the internet. Uh, so yeah, so I'll be back around. I should be back around four o'clock tomorrow, and I'll be finishing at about nine p.m. tomorrow night. Also, uh, but hopefully we can get most of it done. Uh, but for now, I've been AC. You, my audience, this has been Hercule La Prairie, the first cases, and I shall see you all very soon. Peace out. Woo!